for my goodness sake, let me turn down the radio. Oh, there's some sort of echo. 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 Oh, echo. That's right. great. Let, let me hear yeah, an echo. I can hear that. Yeah, that was uh, fascinating. Uh, I, I have to say my uh, crap detector went off when that last person started saying someone's name on the radio. I, it's a shame we don't have a seven-second delay. Uh, I just want to say I used to go to the club scene back in the... I started in the, in the 70s. Okay. There were a couple of years where I just decided, you know, uh, screw this. I'm going to stay home. Uh, so I would sit home and watch television. But then the 80s came along and it became uh, fun again. And uh, one type of club that you didn't mention uh, is uh, before uh, before it became uh, very dirty to go to these places. Uh, mm -hmm. You go to the place where uh, people were uh, dancing uh, naked and uh, peeing and uh, throwing BM at each other. And it was a lot, a lot of fun to tell you the truth if you wore a plastic sheeting. Yeah. Okay. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What were the names of these places? Oh, I, I, I don't remember. This is down in uh, New York. But uh, it was a lot of fun watching people uh, exhibiting far photos of the blowhole. And uh, there was uh, a lot of times where I, I believe that many people should have joined the Joe Ardinger Taint Society of BM Eaters Anonymous. Uh, can you believe that Lisa Herndon is marrying a primate when she should be with me, the great platypus tongue? And do you ever listen to the Don and Mike show? Uh, Actually, I do listen to Don and Mike. Let him go. Uh, Good morning, you're on the air. Well, that's so funny because he missed Joe Ardinger, and I know exactly who he's talking about. Good morning. We, we just got slimed. That's, okay. that's, that's okay. Hi. Hi. Okay. Hi, Don and Mike. We appreciate it. Thank you. Hi. Welcome to our show. Hey, Don and Mike. What you don't know could fill a book. It's the Don and Mike show, and they'll say what they wish. Where else would you rather be than right here, right now? Here they are. Oh, no. The guys who brought the nice weather with them, they did not. They did no such thing. Don't give them that much credit. They're like Mary Tyler Moore. What that song? Who can, who can turn on the world with a smile? Right. That's it. That's that. True story.
pregame mode, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, yeah. it's just like. Well, uh, we get an offensive crouch anytime we're around these. We guys. do, rightly so. And it was awkward, and, and I was writing a, a note to myself right, right here on the on the sheet of paper that I use my cheat sheet, and you know, he, one of them, Michael, came over and said. What you writing? <laughs> you know, uh, something to say on the show. I hope it's nothing about me. <laughs> <laughs> At least he gets it. And I said, he well, totally no. gets it. I said, no, I did something before I, you pulled in at the same time as me, but uh, as long as you mention it, I'll, I'll write your name down as well. <laughs> <laughs> now, here, listen, here's my complaint, and I'm just going to throw this out, and then we'll be done with it. It's, it's about traffic reports on the radio. <laughs> I know we've talked about this recently. I know that... that a lot of you who drive in, in all the cities we, we live in and, and our show is broadcast to, the traffic reports on the radio are just a friggin' waste of time. I'm, I'm leaving my house today at 118, mm-hmm. and I turn on the news station that gives you, like all the news stations, weather and traffic on the 8th. Mm-hmm. So I hear in there saying, you know, there's problems on you know, Pennsylvania Avenue and problems you know, with Silver Spring. Great, no problem. Mm-hmm. I hop on the the Dallas Toll Road, and and really, you can relate the story to wherever you live. Just put whatever road you live on that gets you to the highway. Right. I get on the access road, the the toll road, to get to the Beltway, which is our highway. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I get to the Beltway, right by Route Seven, there is not just a slowdown; mm-hmm. it's stopped. Wow. Cars are not moving, and as I it took me ten minutes to inch around to 123 right. where I get off the beltway and as I'm getting off the beltway in the slow parade of people that are doing the same thing as me I notice that for miles ahead the beltway is just jammed mm-hmm. and as I'm doing the, the back bass backwards way of driving through side streets and everything else to get to work I, I make a point of turning on Oldies 100 to hear the traffic, to hear what's what's going on on the Beltway. Mm-hmm. And th- there's there's no mention of whatever this backup is. Then I, I turn on the station that has weather and traffic on the 8s, and there's no mention of it. And I turn on the Rush Limbaugh station, mm-hmm. and there's no mention of it. And, and the reason is that all they're doing is repeating stuff that's fed to them down a down a computer from some main center. Yeah, they're all getting the same stuff. Where right. some schmuck is right. looking at the traffic cameras that you see on television. And the problem with all of this radio traffic is that they give you 10 seconds of traffic and right. 30 seconds of commercial. Mm-hmm. So, I'm thinking, and I know that this is an idea that they'll never use because it makes too much sense. <laughs> you hire somebody to sit here in our studios, you know, adjacent, and you get a, a a phone like Pound Sand or whatever, you know, Pound, whatever the, right, you know, 5527, whatever it is, Pound Sand. And if you're in a backup, you call us and tell us about it. And that's how we get the traffic on the air. And then you hire someone, what, Rob? I'm right in the middle of something here, very important. And you can play a request for them. Okay. <laughs> I'm taking this seriously. Don't, I know. Very I'm serious. Mind. Don't derail me, Mein Kampf. <laughs> so, <laughs> so here's the thought. Uh-huh. You actually take the time to put someone in a room and say, we are not going to subscribe. And here's the problem, though. The problem is that the company that, supply, that supplies the the SE traffic, which isn't really traffic, it's just commercials, is owned by the company that owns our radio station. Right. So, you know, they're probably not going to do this. But what you do is you fire them, <laughs> and, you, and you free up, uh, you know, two minutes an hour that we run already doing this junk. And you get somebody, if it's Lisa or if it's Joe, it doesn't matter, who's coming in and really reading real traffic, from real people who have called in. Now, you might say... Pranksters. You might say, well, Mike, let's not even get to pranksters. Let's, you Sorry. know, if you have... Okay, but there's a way around that. Oh. If more than one person calls yeah. to say, I'm stuck on the Beltway by mm-hmm. Route 7, then you know it's not a prankster. Right. And here's what they would say to me if I presented this idea to them, and I'm past presenting ideas to them because they don't do anything with the ideas. Mm-hmm. You present this idea, they say, well, that's great, but... Where are we going to get the manpower? We don't have the money for this. And I say to you, with no offense to the person who has the job here at the radio station, because she seems very nice, you fire the graphic artist. But no! Well, listen, you have, oh, a, you have a graphic no, artist oh. at a radio station that doesn't do any advertising. She's, she's not for just our radio station. Well, then why is she here? It's office space. You know, it's the synergy thing. 
She's very nice. Well, and I don't doubt she's nice. I'm just saying if it's not her, there has to be some other, some other position around here. And who knows? Maybe they'll not end up being Joe. I don't know. Joe. There, had to be, there has to be someone around here who certainly is not pulling their weight to where you could hire somebody for seven bucks an hour to answer, you know, pound sand with people calling with traffic. And then, then you'd be able to, now get this, you'd be able to actually say to your listeners, we have real traffic information. So you were in a horrible backup today. Well, it, it happens all the time now. Yeah. Doesn't it just and happen all the time anyway now? Isn't it? Yes. And isn't the, the need for traffic really irrelevant? Because, and frankly, the, no, it's no, always no. It's all jam. bad. No, no, it's not. Because three days out of five, the beltway on this stretch that I take is fine. Mm. Right. And all I like when I leave my house, when I turn on the dumb station that doesn't really supply news, is for them to say, oh, and incidentally, the Beltway, which is a major highway surrounding you take our the city. Beltway to work? I take, uh, yeah, the toll road to the Beltway to 66. Why, Norm, why do you take that way? Because the spit is 55. And yet you, you've timed it out to do better? Yeah, and if there's no traffic, I can make it here in like 23 minutes. Oh, okay. So, you know, it, I'm, I'm always trying to, you know, to, you know, expedite, speed up. Expedite? Uh, exped, thank you. Right. The, the process. Okay. But the whole thing about traffic on the radio just blows and it's not real and it, and it doesn't help anybody no it is it is an exercise it's a it's and a you know why don't we just and a for, put up job. for one time why don't, why don't we just break out of the mold and try to do one thing that you could actually say to your listeners yeah. when, how come we don't have well, and you're going to say it's too expensive but how come we don't have a guy in a copter or a plane Oh my God! Forget that. <laughs> well, they used to. They, your yeah, guy, no, your, but I'm at saying, the station you used to work at. But I'm saying, forget from this place. Why not? Because of what you just said. Yeah, it would cost too much money, but that would be the guarantee. But then again, you still can't cover the whole area. No, right. and they'd say, what do you do on cloudy days or rainy days or foggy days when you can't take the helicopter? Like on like Sky Fox. Right. Sky Fox can't go up every day. Well, didn't the uh, the old on the eights used to have a guy in a plane? Um, they used to. I, I don't know. But even if there was a guy in the plane, you know, I, I trust my fellow motorists more. It, it's just... they got to put more cameras up, too. It's a crock. It's just a useless crock. And, and we're part of it here, and, and they're going to hear me talking about it, and they're going to go, oh, there he goes again. <laughs> there he goes. But here I go again with another idea that makes perfect sense, yep. which is why this station will not utilize it. Absolutely. You know, why do something that would benefit... The people that are listening, and, and trust me, the traffic that I face and that you face is nothing right. compared to what people deal with every day. And wouldn't it? My heart goes out to those people that, that have to be where they have to be. And, and it's just gotten worse and worse and worse. We have no effective mass transit in this city. Right. Metro is fine, but it's not fine enough. And, and this is not just a Washington, D.C. phenomenon. This is in all the cities we broadcast. And this too. is everywhere. I mean, it's just becoming, the planet's becoming too overpopulated, and that's and the, why and the, I urge everybody to move. The traffic is the same <laughs> everywhere. It's, uh, well, things are back up on the main road. This traffic brought to you by <laughs> Super Fresh, planning a barbecue. You know, I mean, it's like the yeah. whole thing. It's a commercial. Right. It's not traffic. Right. It's BS. It just sucks. Mm -hmm. And and you could actually, and again, something that I guess, you know, the genius, and I said this to these guys when they came out of their cars today, the, the yeah. manager, they said, are you back from the genius convention? <laughs> something that the geniuses would never actually contemplate doing something that might benefit the listeners, that might give the, the listeners a real reason to turn in and tune on the radio station. How much time would you give your traffic reporter? Uh, considering the fact that we... Right now, give the traffic reporter a minute, and about 45 seconds of it is a commercial. You could cram it in a, in a minute. Yeah, with no commercial. If you got somebody speaking very quickly saying, listen, it's, it's back up in all the normal spots, but here's where it's really bad. Right. And like I, I hear the, the douchebag on, on WTOP, on the news station... Now, they give him more time, and he's talking about how they're doing construction on University Boulevard, but... There also there's there's changing lanes. Do you want to go to the left lane to the right lane? And then there's a big sign that will tell you to do you know. And I'm listening. I'm listening going, this is crap. Right. <laughs> this is not traffic. This is this is crap. And I know you're thinking, who would take such a job? Again, I'm here with a solution for you. Hello. <laughs> there you go. What's he doing? Yeah. He'd love it.
What's he doing? He'd want to come back. He'd love to get back into the radio business. Hello. I'm Ken Stevens with Don and Mike Real Traffic. Don and Mike Real Traffic. I like that name. And, you know, that's the whole other thing. With Washington's on-time traffic, Washington's most reliable traffic. Right, Don and Mike Real Traffic. All of it's BS. All comes out of the same channel. All these 100s is real You know, if you did traffic. it well enough, and, and really, to be serious about this, if you did that job well enough, you, you, we'd be known for it. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. know, we'd be known for Because if people really want, how many times an hour would you give them uh, the four? Twice. We'd give it twice. We, we break for commercials twice an I hour. Think you'd have to do it on the, on the threes. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's part of the dumb radio thing. I know you're kidding. <laughs> Rob just went incidentally to uh, the website, or Lisa went to the website where you get the current pictures of what's happening. Right. And the current picture that they have, if you want to look at I-495 at US-50, which is always a very congested area, the most recent photo that they have, which we just pulled up, is 15 and a half hours old. Perfect. And you can Absolutely. tell because it has the date and the time in the, on the bottom of the it, left hand. It was screen. dark then. Yes, it's a picture from <laughs> last night uh, at uh, 23.59. Uh, hold on, Charlie. It's not from last night. It's from June 1st. <laughs> oh, man. That is oh, late. You're right. 2003-601. That's not timely at all. So it's June 1st. So it's four days old. My God. Anyway. What is wrong with people? I don't know. There you go. That's that's my uh, that's my bitch. That's my complaint. Uh, that's your beef. Big uh, big weekend coming up. Oh, and, oh Alan Linewan has just uh, sent me a, a, an instant message. He'll do it if people will pay 40 cents per call. For the traffic. If we, a, if, we have, if we have a number that says you can call for real traffic, it'll cost you 40 cents every time. 40 cents a call. But you donate. You donate that money to your fellow commuters. That's why he's... That's why he's That'd be about uh, as likely as somebody letting you in. I got a big weekend uh, coming up. I got my kids' uh, high school reunion tomorrow. Definitely excited about it? Yeah. Oh, definitely. I got my wife's uh, 48th birthday. Coming up on Saturday. You know it was her birthday this weekend, right? Yep, sure is. Same time every year. And, uh, <laughs> you know, much like you did when you throw in the hints, yeah. she has to do that with me now, too. Right. You mean the hint about my birthday being June 22nd? No, I've already got a post-it <laughs> note about your birthday. She has to remind me about her birthday. <laughs> and uh, I want stuff. <laughs> I just want to say, because I know that uh, they're listening out there, I received it today, okay? Yes. You know what? I, I don't want to say what I want to say, and I won't. It's your thing, and then but I'm, my nutty makes, family. That makes me mad. Oh. My nutty family, mm. and I'm going to read you what was written to me, just to show them I'm not afraid of them. Right. The card, which was sent to me, has a picture of a bluebird <laughs> oh, on the nice. front of it. That's the most that's really really and it came to me addressed at the radio station. You know, personal. Right. Okay. So I open it up, and it says, Michael. Which, of course, is my real name. Right. Everybody knows. I would suggest you contact me before embarrassing records become public. For example, Brian Michael. I have plenty of proof of everything. And it's, it's unsigned, although, you know, I know who it's from. And the, the question here is... What is this? Any return address on it? Oh, no, there's the re there's a return address. I mean, I know who it's from. You see who it's from? Wow. Okay? How nuts is she? That is nuts. How nuts is she? Yeah. Now, I know that... Uh, I mean, it's just... It's mind-boggling. Here's the thing. I know that... Oh, jeez. 20... I'll get married to Frida. 20, 22 years. 23 or 24 years ago, when I was in between wives... I had dated a girl in Chicago, and this girl was severely nuts, okay? And this girl who was severely nuts became very close friends with my mother and father, who oh also happened oh. to be very nuts. Perfect. And I believe that a long time ago, my mother had said to me something about the fact that, you know, she had your baby. Well, if, if that's the case, I'm a public person, and yeah. I'm... I'm here. How many years? How many years ago are we talking about? Uh, 24 years ago. <laughs> wow. Okay. And right. if in fact, because this is a, I guess the trump card that she has that she's holding. Is that the name she's mentioning? Yeah. There? That, I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, Brian, my, unless it has something to do with me. Right. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. But if, how cryptic. But if there are, listen to me now, Francis, because I know you listen, and this is the easiest way to talk to you. 
you you dumb you you dumb poor horrible misfit of a woman not fit to be the parent of an animal if in fact you think you've got something on me and even if you think that I am the father of a child that I obviously don't know about well then don't be so coy bring me the information we solve these things with blood tests and if I am the father of a child from 24 years ago that I don't know about and I swear on my kid's life I don't know, I'll do the right thing. I would have done the right thing 24 years ago if I had known about this. But the fact of the matter is, this is she's contacting you, not, yes. not the mother of this ch yeah, alleged right. child. Mm -hmm. Even if that's mm -hmm. the case, and I don't know if that's the case. You don't right. know this case, but obviously... Whatever the case is, the mother of the child has not deemed it important to contact you. Michael, and, and listen to this. What kind of person sends a threatening letter like this? I would suggest you contact me before embarrassing records be public. That's uh, blackmail. For uh, example. That, incidentally, that is blackmail. And my minimal knowledge uh, of, of the law mm -hmm. is that that what you hold in your hand right there, and whoever's listening ought to know this, too. That is very much against the law. For example, Brian Michael, I have plenty of proof of everything. Well, you know what, Francis? If you got plenty of proof, send it my way. No, uh, you know what? I, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna give you a nice little piece of advice right here. What that is is something that is very a very wrong and very nasty thing to do, and I think it's even worse than that. And I think you might want to consult uh, somebody who would be aware of how bad that, that is. I've talked to attorneys before about right. these nutty people. Right. And I actually, she's already broken a court order that I Isn't already... Isn't this her M.O., though? Isn't this what she did to your brother, a similar type of thing? Yeah, mm -hmm. right. A except the deal is, my brother, for whatever reason, doesn't have the intestinal fortitude that I do. Uh, no offense to my brother, who I, who I really love. Mm -hmm. And you all know that. Uh blows my mind. Yeah. What do you think? It... But you know, it makes sense to me now when you read something like that, why he, didn't he get a restraining order? Yeah, and he now has had to go undercover. Mm -hmm. You know, he lives somewhere, and I'm sworn to secrecy about where he lives, and his phone is under a different name, and he had to get a restraining order against these nuts. Wow. You know, Francis, listen, I told you when I spoke to you on Friday about Sam, it's over. There is nothing you have over me before embarrassing records become public. That's if, a, that sounds like a threat of blackmail to me in its purest form. And hold on to that letter because there's that little sticker on it. And that's a very, very bad move that was made. Yeah. Do you believe? Do, I mean, really, and I've not spoken about this with my wife. I mean, what is blackmail, guys? What is it other than, hey... I'm threatening to reveal this if you don't, you know, you even know. though, and that type of blackmail is done all the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, hold on. That's <laughs> me. Called your phone. <laughs> I got a DJ jingle on my phone. Where'd you get that idea? Oh, I stole it from Rob. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Rob's got the greatest answering machine. Says, you've reached the voicemail of, and then it goes, hey, Rob, speak back. <laughs> the greatest. Hey, then I got to steal that. So how'd you do that? Do that for me. Anyway, I think, you know, I'm busy doing the show here today. I think I'm going to have my wife just handle this. But, but please remember what I say to you about that. That's yeah. exactly what that is. I know it's blackmail. Hi, this is Frida. Oh, you she's, not, she's not there. Anyway, I only bring this up on the radio because I know that, Francis, that you, you listen to other people. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know if we're on down in the, the part of the country that, that you live in. But I'm not afraid of you. And uh, here's the uh, dictionary definition of blackmail. Mm -hmm. Extortion or coercion by threats, especially of public exposure right. or criminal prosecution. Right. Yeah, there you go. Bingo. So there you go. That's it. Perfect example. Listen, I got nothing to hide from you, from my family, from anybody that listens to this show. I don't think uh, you would read that letter if that was the case. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I mean, you, you know of course this, you don't. This is, this is the big gun you've got? Yeah. This is the this is the best you can do. Bring it. Ooh. I tell you what. If and I'm reading between the lines. Unless it's something about me. Unless I'm Brian Michael. Uh, I can only estimate that you're indicating, as I recall, you did at one point during one of your less than lucid moments 
10 or 15 years ago, back when you sent me everything I own in a box, uh, you mentioned something about this with the nutty girl from Chicago whose name I don't even remember. Uh, if that's the case, well, why don't you have her give me a call? Mm -hmm. And I'd be glad to take a blood test and find out. Can I ask you a question? This is pretty heavy stuff. This yeah. is pretty serious, and uh, I don't mean to offend, but based on the name that was on that letter, and just answer me honestly, because yeah. I've worked with you for a long time, yeah. and I think I'm owed, at the very least, an answer. Yes. <laughs> have you ever had an affair with Larry Michael? <laughs> Do you and Larry have a love child named Brian Michael? <laughs> Not, the, not one that I want to speak about, Mike. Thank you. Okay. Uh -huh. If you want to play it that way, I'm, I'm, then that's fine. It, depend, that it depends. Be that way. Do you call petting <laughs> an affair? Heavy <laughs> petting. Heavy <laughs> petting with her. Heavy <laughs> petting, Dom. <laughs> anyway. Uh, what a, really? What a crazy, nutty bitch. Wow. I mean, I'm less emotional about it now than I was on Monday after, after, after the letter I got on Monday. If everybody had TV and they could see this letter with the bluebird on the, on the front. You know, it's like you open it up and it's like a, hi, how you doing, note. And Happy on, spring. And on the inside, you know, Michael, I would suggest you contact me before embarrassing records become public. For example, Brian Michael, I have plenty of proof of everything. God, shove it up your ass. <laughs> I got nothing to hide. Anything, you know, listen, you got something on me. You know what? At this point, well, are you, what is it? You're going to have to, you're going to have to prove it. Mm -hmm. you're, if you, if you think you've got anything on me, and I'm speaking now to my adoptive parents. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have to, I don't think we've mentioned that. You're going to yeah. have to prove it. That comes from a parent. Yeah. You're going to have to prove it. I don't care me. what you've done. Where you've been, who you are, the the fact that that comes from a parent. Yeah. You know, prove it. Jesus. And this was sent, in case you're wondering, uh, Monday, June 2nd, in the PM. So obviously this is a response to what I said on Monday's episode of the show. Yeah. Whoever I, is getting I, the information uh, is doing it by phone. When I, when I when I spoke about how you know conflicted I was about this thing with my you know my adopted father right. dying, I guess that kind of takes do. care of the conflict now, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, are you <laughs> yeah. kidding? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Please. I'm petrified. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> Baby, I'm so scared. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Fran. Oh man, I've just I've just evacuated in my pants. <laughs> I'm so afraid that you have some deep, dark secret about me. Where it came from a parent. I tell you what, bring it on. You have plenty of proof? How about sharing it with me? Mm -hmm. How about sharing it with me? And let me validate or invalidate this proof. Right. Okay? You tired, old, pathetic, horrible, evil woman who I told 10 years ago, just leave me alone. Right. Can't do it. Just stay out of my life. But if you want to be involved in my life, anytime you send me something like this, it's going to be on the radio. Because do you see, I'm not afraid of what you're trying to do to me. What do you think I'm going to do? Get this letter, hide it, and go, oh, my God. I better my contact God. her. Oh, oh my God. She's got something on me. Oh, please. Please. You dumb bitch. You know what you got on me? You got on me the fact that I finally escaped your grip and the way that I was brought up. Oh, hold on. This might be my wife. Hello? Health and Crisis International accepts donations of used vehicles, which we auction to raise money for needy children. We can be found at www.helpincrisis. Not today. I don't want to help anybody today. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Not today. A weird hat. <laughs> so anyway. That was Jesus calling you. Yeah. It's nuts. You know, and I'm sorry. I'm just sharing it with you now. Because Good. I'm glad you are. You know, that's what I that's just what got it. I think that's know. exactly what you should do. Five right? minutes before we walked on the air today. Wow. You know. A letter from a parent. There you go. Uh, you know, I don't care what your deal is. That's just to... Uh... I have plenty of proof of everything. Huh. Bring it on. Bring it on. Bring it on. What's the worst? What's the worst possible case? If I have a child, which is what I'm assuming you're writing about, I have no knowledge of it. Prove that I knew. Prove that I've ever been contacted by anybody about this. Right. Prove it. And I'll take a blood test because I think that that's what this is all about. 
a blood test to prove whether or not you are the, the father. father of Larry Michael's love child. <laughs> And it, if that is the case, I find it rather hard to believe. If it is the case, that may I be the first one to say, uh, <laughs> way to go, Stubb. <laughs> if, if, if that is the case, I find it hard to believe that in 24 years I never heard yeah. a, a, a well, word. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if that was the case, which is uh, you know almost 100% chance it's not. But if it was, why would not the uh, individual have contacted him? Right. Yeah. Yeah, especially once word got around that I've got a couple of nickels to rub together. Yeah. <laughs> you would think you would that think that there would have been some contact, as there of often is in a similar situation. But of course, and perhaps think, you know, even if uh, you know, even if that was the case, the individual here's the deal didn't choose to do that. Here's the deal. I, I know it ain't true, and if it is true, well, you know, then I'm the first to know, <laughs> along with you guys. But Francis, and I'm speaking to you now. Stop this. This, this is really psychotic. <laughs> this is, the, and I'm pointing now to the letter of the, 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 the bluebird, the bluebird yeah. on this card. This is beyond psychotic. And you had, you had the balls when my brother got a restraining order against you to send a letter to the judge telling the judge that you thought my brother was mentally unstable. Wow. I pose this question to both of these people. You had two adopted sons who could not have led different lives and who could not be in more different places in, in the world, in their lives, than they are right now. Yet both of these sons are estranged from you. Do you think it's, you think it's us? Yeah, really. Do you think it's all us? Really. Come on. I, I mean, you're talking, we're not like two peas in a pod, my brother and I. Oh, and uh, mention the fact that, uh, you know, you two get along pretty damn well, you and your brother. Yeah. And you've maintained a very close uh, relationship in spite of everything that you She, uh, She and you know, he have actually helped my brother and I become closer. Yeah. You know, because yeah. they, they, put, they have put my brother through more crap that I've ever discussed on the radio. And, and the reason that they can't do it to me is because... I can afford lawyers, mm -hmm. and, you know, like seven years ago, I, I actually hired our attorney, Doug, to send them a letter mm -hmm. and say, you know, my client doesn't want any more contact from you. Once I got everything in a box sent back to me, it kind of told me that it was over. Yeah. Doug would be real interested to, uh, to hear about that letter, too. So I got some blackmail for you. Stop sending me threatening notes, or I'm going to open up. The entire book on you, with all the stuff that I've never talked about concerning you, Francis. I got some good stories about what happened during World War II. I've got some real interesting stories that I happen to know are true. And I'm sorry to sink to your level... But it's the only thing you understand. You, you, you stupid old woman. It's funny when you say World War II. Yeah, it's a long time ago. Well, because really, she is how old? Uh, early 80s. Unbelievable. Wow. Yeah, I got, you know, I've got, I've got stuff, you know. But you don't see me her sending her letters saying, if you don't stop contacting me, I'm going, I'm going to tell everybody what I know about you. Right. But okay, listen, you old bitch, let it go. Let it go. As you said to my wife, oh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, your words, not mine. My brother and I were just two little children that nobody wanted. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's probably the first honest thing you ever said mm -hmm. about me or my brother. So let it go. Let it go. I'm sorry that I've risen above your pathetic, idiotic, pathologically lying personality to make something of myself. And I'm sorry that the fact that, I, that I've made something of myself allows me to address you this way. But this is the way that it is. Because I wouldn't have read this letter if you didn't send it to my place of employment. Which is something you've tried doing with my brother year after year after year. Calling his boss, sending his boss letters. Just die! 
you know, there was a time when I felt compassion. There was a time when I... I, I know. I've been there with you. I've there, seen it. There was a time when I thought, well, I'll never get it resolved with these, with these two schmucks. But, you know, God, I feel bad for them. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think maybe time to stop feeling bad for them. I don't feel bad for them. Jesus Christ. I have plenty of proof of everything. I can't tell you, Francis, how scared I am. But I will tell you the name of two or three lawyers you can contact. If you really think you've got something juicy on me. Probably a good idea to do that. Something really good on me. Oh, I'm scared. Oh, if we didn't have the phone rule, I'd call her right now on the radio. And who's the mole? That gets the information down. Okay, you it, know, really, because we you're don't talk laugh, about that. You're going to laugh about this. <laughs> My old babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Jesus. It's my old babysitter. Amazing. <laughs> Although, you know, we're on so many places now around the country. But it could be anybody. It could, it could, you know, we're, being as we're on all over Wisconsin, it, it could be anybody. She's never said to you, you know, how no. she gets her information? No, she never said anything. Hmm. You know? But obviously that was a response to the discussion of the other day. Although she sure does. I tell you what, she, she, while she doesn't keep track of the good things that, that I've done, they've managed to keep track of the bad things. Like, uh, I'm sure you all remember... Uh, seven years ago when I got busted for pot. Mm -hmm. Remember when that was on the front page of the Post? Well, I got a, uh, a clipping of that sent from the state that they live in now. No return address, but, you know, their handwriting that said, you are not a member of our family. Wow. Yeah. Man, kick a dog when it's down. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> I mean, these, these people are effed up. That is effed up. These people are effed up, and this is the only way... That she, you know, and I thought what I said on Monday, well, I, I might have been angry and, and a little misunderstood. I was, uh, I still had a, a modicum of compassion. I think anybody that heard that remembers right. the fact that you were talking about how conflicted you were about, you know, and, and really, I think you said on a number of times that you would, you know, you would be willing to, to extend the olive branch in the event that, you know, because on a pure basis of being family. I, and I tried to. And I said, do you need me to come down there where, where he is? She said, no. No, you're not welcome. Well, that's fine. I'm not welcome. And I talked about it on the radio, and now because I talked about it on the radio, I get this threatening blackmail letter. But listen, Robbie, where's our Wicked Witch music? Because that's the only way I can wind this up. It's just with a personal message from me to Francis. That's really the only thing that's going to do it at this point. You got it? Well, you know, I, I don't because I wasn't expecting a call from Gladys Travis. Give me one second. Uh, hold on, keep looking, Rob. Come on. Please. Don't make me get mad at you. <laughs> You're my best buddy, Rob. Come on, stupid. <laughs> Thank you. Thank I was you, just waiting to be called stupid. <laughs> Thank you. So listen. In summary. First locked up. I'm not going to rave out about the equipment again. No. Not going to rave out about the equipment. Rob is fixing the tape. Thanks. Hold on. I know this, bear with us. This is not your fault. And in summary, Good job. here's what I want you to do. Get back on your bicycle <laughs> and pedal. And I promise, when that house falls on you, and your big red shoes are sticking out from the southeast corner, I'll come by, unzip my pants, and take a leak on them. <laughs> Rot in hell. Now you have to give the Elvis ending. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, I ain't afraid of you. There we go. I am not afraid of you. What do you think, you guys? And I got I got news for you. Be very afraid, because I'm turning this over to a power higher than an attorney, higher than a priest, higher than... I'm going to let my wife handle it. Oh, no. Yeah. I, ain't got, I ain't got time for that. So, listen. Be ready, because I'm going to sick Frida on you. There you go. I'm, I'm just tired of this crap. Yeah, and you shouldn't have to deal with it. And I, no. I think she uh, she'd enjoy dealing with it. Emotional blackmail. Oh, you crazy bitch. You crazy, 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 unbalanced bitch.
but still somehow, I pity you. Mm-hmm. I really do. Jesus Christ. And you call yourself an apparent, a parent? I know you're only an adoptive parent. And I know that what you really think, that my brother and I, well, we were just two kids that nobody wanted and that were bad news and that our genes were bad anyway. But still, you know, I wouldn't treat a dog this way. Yeah, really. For God's sakes. When I got sick of my dog that was driving me crazy, I just had to go move with my mother-in-law. There you go. I didn't write, write her a note. You didn't send all brandy stuff to her. No. <laughs> the late brandy, right? Yeah, yeah the late brandy. Oh, so anyway, uh, listen, sorry to, uh, to waste your valuable time. That's for this, okay, everybody. Uh, this is a ghost of brandy. I only bring it up just because <laughs> it's the only way that this crazy bitch will know I'm not a Message friend. delivered. Gotcha. Okay. So, now, um... Well, you ask him. I already got him something. Oh, what do you want for your birthday? Um, from you? Yeah, you said you wanted something. Well, you had something in mind. I thought we were talking. I, I forgot. I forgot. Yeah, I mean, no captain's hat is what you said for your birthday. Oh, oh, yeah. You asked me about that. You know, um, golf stuff. Okay. Golf stuff. Okay. I'm going to golf again. After uh, yesterday's uh, pro-am, I'm into, I'm into golf. Great. <laughs> then I'm screwed. Why? So I already got you something. It's not golf. So what is it related to? I'm simple. I'm like you. I got simple. Uh... I don't want to tell you. Oh, really? I don't want to tell you. That'd be okay. No, I'm glad you're not getting me a golf gift. I don't like golf gifts. And it's not like the year I got you the uh, the golf shoes that that the golf the sandals. sandals. Yeah, Nothing I don't like that. Remember those. Let me just say, big ticket, high tech. Oh, good, good. All right, good. I like that. That's not the like. That's always good. So there you go. I like it when you give me the high, the high tech stuff. Yeah. Very cool. I already took care of you. Very exciting. Clear the lines out now. Let's get a uh, call 100 going here at 877-365-3636. Call right now. Because listen to me, you listeners. I have plenty of proof of everything. <laughs> so call now or yeah. else, okay? Yeah. Yeah. The secret sound. This is the Don and Mike Show. Key whiz gang looks like the killer gutted the victim, strangled him with his own intestines, and then dumped the body in the river. <laughs> You're right, Scoob. We're dealing with one sick son of a bitch. The Don and Mike Show. More precious than all the spices you could ever trade. Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. Give me one second. Mm-hmm. I just finish with, with uh, my wife. Uh, hi, honey. Hi, Sweetie. And happy birthday. I know you will be, let's see if I got this right, 48 on Saturday, right? That is right. Mm-hmm. Happy birthday, Frida. Happy Thanks, birthday. Mike. Um, thank, thank you, Buzz. Anyway, she doesn't want to call. I am not My call, nutty call. relative. <laughs> this, look, I, I told you on the phone the other day. All she did once, uh, the, uh, she, the only satisfaction she gets in life is by causing misery and having reaction. I don't want to talk to her. She's a crazy. You know what? Yeah, well, I already called her a bitch. Do you remember, I don't know how many years ago, it was 10 or 15 years ago, when she threw this kind of as one of her parting shots about that nutty girl from Chicago? Yeah, uh, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, so uh, I don't, is she, any, as far as I know, unless I'm totally in the dark about, uh, you know, about the fact that you've got a secret male lover hidden, you know, in an apartment in, you know, in the city or something. It's not a secret. It's Larry. Larry Mike. Larry Mike. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, let her, let her bring it on. Bring it on. I would like, the word, she's already shot her wad with me, which was we weren't really married, and that was BS, and we got married again anyway. So bring it on, you know. If she, if, whoever her minions are that report the stuff that you say, from me, let it public. Write a book. Call a National Enquirer. Bring it on. You know, and Frida brought up some interesting points as well. When I was talking to Rita during the break, she's kind of talking me down about this. Mm-hmm. She said, well, first off, uh, have we ever heard from this girl who, you know, I was involved with briefly when I wasn't with Frida? Hey, if you had anything happen with another woman, as in, uh, oh, first of all, before Bart was born, the, the kid is an adult. You have no financial obligation. You never heard from the woman. You have no moral obligation. It's ancient history. What is she going to tell you about a grandchild you're not aware of? What difference? Well, you know, I, I don't know, and it just pisses me off that she sends this foreboding, you know, uh, before embarrassing records become well, public. tell her, let it fly. 
why. Well, you know what? You're telling her now because you know she gets the information through the yeah. radio. Mm -hmm. right. hey, baby, this was mailed on Monday, Monday afternoon after I had spoken about the conversation over the weekend. Right. Well, the only message that I'm getting from that from her is, hey, thanks for letting us know it hit home. Thanks for letting us know that you get the word when we talk about the fact that you've got not just a screw loose, they're all loose. So uh, good. Do I love this woman? Yeah. God mm -hmm. damn, I love this they woman. Have a see why. Do I love her? All right, Sugar I Bear. Really your mission is accomplished. You feel better. You know that she's not the only one jerking your chain. You jerked her hard right back. And if she's got anything, let it fly. Because all she'll do is get talked about more. No, and then really what Mike said that a lot of the callers were saying I wasn't taking calls was that it is blackmail. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> Francis, blackmail. It doesn't have to be true to be blackmail. Let right? it go, Francis. Blackmail Whatever. is a threat, and, and regardless of what, mm -hmm. if you're threatening and you're bluffing like in poker, it's still blackmail. And, yeah. and, and I'm no expert on the law. I know that you and I have been sued a couple of times, but if what she wrote in the letter and I read on the radio is not true, if what I was inferring was not true, is she libeling me in some way? Well, I mean, yeah, you, yeah. the whole point is it's retarded blackmail because her objective is to get you to shut up, and all it did is make you talk about her more. And yeah, if she they, does anything else, all it's going to do is make you talk about her more. So if she wants you to shut up, leave you alone. I did, I did say that if she doesn't shut up, I'm going to talk about World War II. <laughs> See, my wife knows what that means. I have no clue what that means. No, oh, hold on. Oh, yes, no. You, uh, yes, you oh, do. Oh, yeah, I do. All yeah, right. Okay. okay. Right. Well, just let it go. And it's laughable. <laughs> you know, it's laughable, my darling. I know. It just, she pisses me off. You no, know, no. And, and the darling, thing is, she's, she's trying to do the same thing with me as she does with Jimmy. You know, yeah. come on. Be a man. If, if you're going to be a, a down, low, dirty bitch... You know, send it to my house. Don't send it to my work. It, 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 you know, don't send it anywhere. Just leave us alone, and it'll all go away. And that's what she wants. I mean, so just let it go. All right. Well, I'm tr well let's see now what happens now. Mm -hmm. I'll be waiting, as I, as I mentioned, I'll be waiting for the headline in tomorrow's Washington Post about whatever this fantastic revelation is and the embarrassing records that you have. Francis, if there are embarrassing records, how come... I've never been contacted about any of this. How come? Whatever uh, it is. Whatever it is, how come I've never been contacted? Right. All right, Sugar, just let it go. I mean, the, the old saying could never be more applicable than this situation, that living well is the best revenge. Yeah. You are loved. You're living well. She is a poor, un, uh, you know, miserable, crazy uh, old lady. Bitch. And incidentally, the card that this was sent on, I see on the back, it said the uh, the bird is a uh, indigo bunting oh, yeah. illustration by Catherine McClure. Very pretty. As you can see, and it's recyclable. The paper is because yeah, she cares. Very 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 and, and baby, you got to see this thing. It's like it's a happy picture, picture of a sweet, blue. sweet little bird. But, you know, they make very few, it's a very limited selection of crazy stationery, so you have to buy the bluebird. <laughs> Anyway, she's just out of her goddamn mind. I'll, I'm, I'm going to get her on the phone during a break at some point today. All right, I'm my not, goose. I'm not hey, darling, go. goose yeah. again, lays golden eggs. we got to go. All right, yeah, because okay. I know that's the only reason you're married to me, because I'm the yep. goose that lays golden eggs. Keep, keep it up. Keep working. And thanks to her for providing the material that keeps those golden eggs coming. There you go. Yeah. All right. All right. Bye, sweet pea. Bye-bye. Mm. Is she the greatest? Yeah. Is she the greatest? She is. I mean, not my... Uh, not Francis. I mean, you know, I think I think we understand that. He yeah. is the greatest. I pray you all find someone that uh, you get along with as well as I do with my wife. <laughs> I'd be nuts without her. I, uh, Mike, that wasn't a, a. No, no, I'm just uh, saying. Yeah. No, I, yeah, yeah, whatever. It was. Well, I, no, it had nothing to. But no, no, I, I understand. I understand. It wasn't towards you. I, I mean, no, I was joking. To my, when I laughed like that, oh, it was okay. to be funny. You're, you're pretty. You're, you're pretty rapid. I'm sorry. I'm wound up. Yeah, I'll, wound I'll try up. to Let's unwind. Go. Let's go ever forward. Ever okay, forward. Here we go. Time for a call. One hundred. Excuse me. Friend who's not stupid, you didn't put those in the machine for me. <laughs> <laughs> what, was Rob that? Look at Rob. What, was, what was that, friend? What's that? What's that? I said I don't usually. You don't well, I would appreciate a help a little help today. From now on. Just a hand. You that's all. Everybody, everybody will pit, be pitching in today. Yeah. No, that's okay. 
fine. Under control. I think you are. Got it taken care of. You got that woman watching your back. You're all set. Up. Amen. That's right. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Free to Soprano. Am I Carla 100? Yes, you are. And what is your name? My name is George. George, where are you from? Um, Austin Hill. All right, uh, George. I'm, I got to uh, listen to this. Third row tickets before you can buy them to see Leonard Skinner and Sam Hagar. Great. I love him and them. Together at the uh, Nissan Pavilion Tuesday, July 29. Tickets go on sale uh, tomorrow. 10 o'clock at uh, Ticketmaster and NissanPavilion.com. Uh, but wait, there's more. You've also won the E! Exclamation Point Entertainment uh, TV Prize Pack. All summer long, uh, new shows on E! Exclamation Point. <laughs> Nearly famous, too, and celebrities uncensored. Uh, two great new shows from E! Exclamation Tell Point. Tell that dog to be quiet! <laughs> and now uh, you're going to play for $500 with you. Tell that dog to be quiet! Shut up! <laughs> hey, uh, Lisa, would you would you ask uh, Jim if he could wait wait one break? Because I want to catch up on time here today. Uh, we got Mr. Skin coming up, and I'm sorry that, you know, my horrific Maury Povich life has carried over onto the radio today. You know, and I'm watching Maury Povich today, really, and I'm thinking, what kind of idiot? Goes on a national television show? Goes on this show and, like, tells all this. And it was... And the culture of celebrity, Don. That's the most of it. Everybody wants 15 minutes. It's not that, like, my situation. It's people who are right. just... They're just all effed up. Well, I guess it is my situation. <laughs> um, no, it's really effed up if you go on a TV show That's and talk right. about it. Yeah, but it's not effed up to go on a radio and talk about it. Yeah, but you use the radio show as your psychotherapy. Yeah, you have done that for years, and you say it's to keep you off that couch. Yeah, and you know, and really, when I first started talking about those nuts, if you remember, the Jenny Jones show actually did call. Yeah, I don't know. And asked if I wanted to come on the and show. And you said, well, F you. Yeah, no part of it. Okay, $500, and here you go. It's a comedy an everyday sound, and your clues are kids, children, and a Jerry Seinfeld. Mm. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, for 500 bucks, play the sound now. You have 15 seconds to think about it. Please do not answer until Mike sings like. I think this is appropriate today. Cypress Hill. Cypress Oh, oh. <laughs> Yeah. Want to dedicate this to her. Jerry Goller. Name this sound. Because I know... It's got to be her theme song, right? You wait. You'll hear it. Right? Don't, don't give it away. Nutty in the head. It's, that was the white man's translation. Insane in the membrane. Crazy insane. Got no brain. Insane in the membrane. Insane in the brain. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Thank you, Anna. Thank Lisa. Uh, for, a five, uh, for $500, what is that sound? This is the sound of a... Um... Lever on a bubble gum machine, a gumball machine. Um, Wait a minute, they're they're wandering around here. Sir. Consultation is underway. You you haven't won, but they're wandering around putting on a little charade, a little show for for me. I need you to be a little more specific. Um, the lever, like you stick the penny in and you pull in and pull out. The lever on a gumball machine. It's a lever on a gumball machine. No, no, I think I know what he means. Know what you're in the supermarket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm leading the witness here, but do you mean like the thing like where you put in like and you get the those plastic NFL helmets out? So, or, or just, or yeah, or the bubble gum. They're like the bubble okay. gum machine, like you put the penny in the lever. So is that where you're going to stick with? It's not a lever, oh, isn't it? Like a thing a you lever. twist? It yeah, varies. Now, Sometimes it's a drawer. That's Mike, that's it. exactly what I'm getting to. Are you saying a lever or are you saying the thing that you twist that makes the prize come out? The thing that makes the prize come out. Is it a lever or a switch? I'll go with a switch. Are you serious? Is a horse race sound effect? No, you're a big loser. Oh, God. So cruel. I told you they were just doing oh, a dance. Oh, we're sorry. Oh. You, you should have listened to me. However, I want to tell you something. You're close. And you're going to find out when we reveal what this is that this guy's guess was actually close. Thank you, my friend. And don't forget that every guess is a clue, a clue for, for you. you. I'm not saying that this time. Saying what? I think you're tricking. Look at the joy on his face. <laughs> no. You know, he likes the fact that what you're saying could mislead the audience. No. He's no. not a poker face when no. it comes to this. Watch. 
The guy gassed what, Mike? I don't know. A, a lever, lever on a switch. Or, machine, yeah. And then changes it to switch. What are you writing down? Yeah. You're absolutely on track, yeah. See? Right. Look at my uh uh there it is right there. Oh I, I just saw it. What did it say? <laughs> that's the that's the sound? You didn't see it. You said it. Write it down. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> see now you're playing poker too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> now you're playing poker too. <laughs> that was the best though. This thing goes and the guy goes, Did I win? You're kidding. Oh my god. I told him, I told you you were playing a bluff game there, hey. Pretty good. Oh, the, guy, the guy actually came a, a little closer. All right. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. I was uh, uh, watching TV, that, that stupid uh, Beat the Geek show. Well, hold on. And what they is, had the is, nudity geek on what is, there. What is Beat the Geek? What channel? Uh, I think it's on, like, Game Show Network, and there's, like, three geeks, a music, a television. Do they, and, do uh, they physically beat them? <laughs> yeah, I wish. Um, it, okay. Do you I, watch Beat the Geek? Don and Mike. No, it was, uh, no, it's on some game, maybe game show, game show network. But Mr. Skin was on it, and that's why he was out in L.A. and was able to come in studio with us when he was in L.A. because oh. he was the nudity geek. Oh, oh. The nudity geek. Hello, Don and Mike show. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Don. Yeah, Don and Mike. Hi. Hi, hi Don and Mike. Pleasure to be speaking with you. Hey, I, I, I think I'm your son. <laughs> you stop it. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Oh. Turn down no, your radio. No, no, no. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Turn down your radio. Hi. Hey, this is Don and Mike? Uh, <laughs> Should anybody tell these people to listen on the phone? Hello, well, I'm taking on screen calls now. Hey, everybody that's listening, you might be calling now. Listen on the phone when you get through. Hello, Don and Mike. Hi, um, hi, Don and Mike. Hi. Um, I just want to say I love your show. I listen to you guys every afternoon. Oh, I love you. you laugh my I, like, ass off. <laughs> I love your little giggle. Thank you. Um, I actually wanted to know when you guys tomorrow we're going to do the sounds again because I think I really know what it is, but I got to know when to call in. Well, make sure uh, honey, I'm not going to be in work or anything. Honey, um, see tomorrow. Tomorrow, actually, we uh, we're not going to be here because my, my son is graduating high school tomorrow. See? Oh God! So you have to wait till Monday. See? Okay. But aren't we giving away? Are we uh, the new policy? We're giving away prizes See? during the best of shows. Yes, right? we're giving right. away a trip to Hooters uh, Air uh, on uh, to Myrtle Beach on oh, Hooters Air wow. on tomorrow's show. Well, I'll, I'll definitely call for that anyway. Okay. <laughs> See. All right. Thank you for calling. Thanks. Bye bye. See. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hello, Don. Can't Mike. argue with it. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. You're on the air. Thank you. Hello, Don. No, yeah, you're, yeah, you're on the air now. Get it? Hello. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike and Buzz. Hi. Hi, Buzz. By the way, your voice just drives me nuts. Thank you. Uh, thanks, baby. Uh, you're welcome. And I'd like you to call my answer machine and just go, Janice. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> Don, I'm sitting here listening to your son graduating this I just weekend. Just say, don't put these things away. See? Yeah. Yes. Anyway, I'm sorry. How did you? How did your son grow up so quick? I remember listening to you when I lived in Baltimore, and he used to call on the phone. I don't know. As a See? Boy. It happens. See? Before you it, know it. Before it, you know it. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hey, um, she sent your your crazy uh, whatever she is. Did she send that stuff through the mail? Like not a courier or anything? No, it was brought up here on a guy on a horse. Yeah, it came U.S. mail. Yeah, U.S. Well, mail. Sending letters to the U.S. mail is a federal offense, too. You might want to think about that. Gotcha. All right, thank you. See you later. Hello there, Don and Mike Show. Don. Yes. I know why she sent you a card with a bluebird on it. <laughs> why? Because it's just so damn hard to find one with a cuckoo bird on the front. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike Show. Cuckoo bird! Hello, Don and Mike. Bird. Hello. Hey, Don. Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> You, uh, what, you guys, have you, you been you listening guys, today? Do I have to re-explain it to you? Then. No, I, I, you guys have a great show every day, and then I don't understand you entertain us here. I mean, your family seems horrible. It's just, it's ridiculous. I don't thank, understand it. Thank you, Captain Obvious. <laughs> Captain Obvious, yes. Hey, America's newest superhero. <laughs> thank you. Talk about something else. Make us laugh. Captain Obvious. Oh, here you go. Now we're going to get to the agenda of this. Please listen to this. It's the Don and Mike show, and they'll say what they wish. It's my show. It's Mike's show. We're going to talk about whatever we want. We talk about our lives. That's part of the deal. If you yeah, but the, 
the, the, the funny part about it is that you guys are hysterical, and then that comes in. It's like i got to stop working for a minute. And sit okay, down. so you know what, then? If, if I'm going to talk about how effed up my family is because it's top of mind with me, for that hour, don't listen. Turn it off, then, huh? Yeah, turn it off. I, I, I can live. I'll call Arbitron and tell them that one guy who just doesn't get it won't be listening today. I get it. I definitely get it. The no, no, you don't. Is, no, you don't get it. You don't get it. You don't get like the show. It's what? It's like every third day. Every third day. Well, in this case, it is because I had a confrontation on Monday and then today. But tell me the third day before Monday. Before it was last Thursday. What was it last Thursday? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Really? A letter and or something. You went off the handle about a letter you got. Sent to your wife, remember? A letter sent to my wife? Sent to oh, I know what that is, that you were listening to a tape that day. That was the Donald Rumsfeld day. Oh, okay. So that really doesn't count. That was okay, an so old show. Count. So now let's go back. you're hysterical. Let's go three more days back. Let's go back to Thursday to uh, to, to Monday again. Are you, are you trying to guess my memory here or what? Are you jogging my memory here? No, no, we're trying to make a point. Okay. And, and you know what the point is? I was is? just making a point, that's all. Do you know what the, what our point is? Yes, I understand your point. What is it? Tell me what it is. Those, Tell the only me. way to communicate with those idiots that are out there making idiot remarks is over the radio. Understandable. What? No, I, I asked for what our point was, and your radio's turned up, and I want you to tell us what's our point. It's a very simple point. Today? The any point we're trying to make with your dumb ass. Any day. Right now. Any day. The point we make any day. Well, I'll be, I'll be glad to tell you since you don't remember it. Well, he played it a moment ago, and Bob Barker said it. The point is, now, do you know who Bob Barker is? Bob Barker, yes. Okay, listen to him. Jesus. It's the Don and Mike show, and they'll say what they wish. Okay? What that means is we have the show, we have the microphones, we're going to talk about whatever we want. If you don't like it, you have the power to turn it off. It is sometimes funny, it is sometimes heavy, it is always real. Unless we're pretending to be somebody we're not. <laughs> And there's the, there's the first sign of the chink in the armor. Now go away. The nervous laugh. Please, God, go away. Really, I'm not... Can you hear me, sir? I'm, listen, I'm just listening to your ramble. Well, no. Will you go away now? <laughs> you got me on the phone. No, no. You called us. We didn't call exactly. you. You're right. making points and points and points, correct? No, we made one point. What is the point we made? Bob Barker. No. Our show. We talk about what we want. I there you go. There it is. Yeah. Live it. Right. Know it. Now listen, when, when you're doing whatever menial task it is that you're doing, I'm guessing something with your hands, whenever you're doing it, <laughs> you don't see me showing up saying, hey, you're not digging that ditch well enough or, or you're not molding that piece of hamburger into a quarter pounder correctly. That's right. I got a name tag and a hat. But that's neither here nor there. You always talk about the ratings. And I'm just calling as one of your listeners and saying, hey. Well, I'm going to call Arbitron today and tell them to cross one off the retard part. <laughs> <laughs> the retard part, huh? Yeah, so we made our point? Got it. it Good. Just like, let me, let me ask you a question, just one last thing, just indulge me. If you're watching a TV show and you don't like the TV show, let's say you're watching, well, being... Going on your intellect, I'm going to say you're a fan of um, According to Jim. <laughs> Let's say you're watching According to Jim and you don't like Sports it. Center there, knucklehead. Pardon me? He likes Sports, Sports Center, Center, knucklehead. Okay. You can use Sports Center. Let's say you're watching example. Sports Center and they're not doing, and they're goofing around or they're not doing enough of what you want. Would you ever pick up the phone and call Stu Isaac? What's the guy's name? Stuart, Stuart Isaac or Dan Patrick or. Stuart Scott, would you ever call them? Most likely not. Why? Because it's a television show. And, yeah, and this is TV for blind people. And how many times? <laughs> how many times? How many times have you bitched about your ratings? All I'm saying is I'm giving you a little bit of advice. When have we bitched Somebody about? Uh, hold From on. Six in the morning until oh. seven at night. I listen. What are you talking about bitching about the ratings? We have uh, pretty good ratings. A couple weeks ago, you were saying the rating thing. 
You're all over the place, my friend. I tell you what, I do hope Arbitron gets a hold of you, though. But you really aren't. You do listen to the show a lot, and you really aren't qualified. You're not qualified to call. Okay. Okay? Okay. Have a great weekend. And and if if you ever call again, I'll 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 call you back in 10 minutes. I would suggest you contact me before calling again. Because embarrassing records I have when you will become public. Oh, no. <laughs> I have plenty of proof of everything. Okay. Final question. Is your name Brian Michael? <laughs> Absolutely not. All right. That's a yeah. shame. So you didn't even get that. Goodbye. Yeah. <sighs> oh. Okay, bye. Hang up, please. Please, God, hang up. Thank you. <laughs> there he goes. God, what an idiot. <laughs> there he goes. Well, what are you going to do? <laughs> What are you going to do? I'm going to press a button. <laughs> I know, but, <laughs> but I want to thank Ted Tedious for calling in. <laughs> he was okay. Um, I, got, I got a question. Yeah. Did anybody get any vodka around here today? <laughs> I wish. There's right. some up in the office, Mike. <laughs> uh, we're going to break, come back, Mr. Skin, and yeah. then we're giving away another Hooters trip to Myrtle Beach. On Hooters Air. Uh-huh. Very good. Okay. And I think for the rest of the show, probably, well, and except for the game, it'd probably be best if it's just us and not you. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> the show generally on days like today goes better when it's just us and not you. Listen and enjoy. So just listen, but, but don't try to call. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. Oh, tell me they're just sit, like letting our audiences stand out there like that. Oh, my God. Okay. So let's hurry off. Seriously. This is retarded. They told me they were going to do a vamp. Oh, oh, no. What are they doing? Let me see. Oh, my pants are too short. I grew. I thought they were going to... I know. Well, I'm just not going to just stand out. I thought they were going to... Okay. Okay, thanks. See? I'm going to start it. The Don and Mike Show. Is anyone listening? You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. Hey, what happened? Shake a hand. Have a word with Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. Uh, now, listen, uh, today not only are we giving away the Hooters trip, which we'll do in a second, if you've listened to the whole show today, and I hope you listen even to the, the, the first part with, you know, the Maury Povich part about my life, right? We're giving away a trip to Los Angeles to someone who's listened to the whole show today. Two-night, three-day trip to L.A. to go to the star Center E! Exclamation point Hollywood party at the Highlands Nightclub on August 23. That's a great prize. And that is from E. Oh. Thank you, Rob. I do love it. Whenever we yeah. mention Los Angeles, we play this. I love it, too. And we got to get out there, you know, at some point. I feel like the second day we're there. Yeah, then you want to come home. Then I hate it. Golden anyway, you go there for two days. It's like Iceland. Yeah. It's perfect for two days. <laughs> but beyond that, I don't know. But then again, that's just me. Right. That's just me. Um... Jim Skin? James. James. Jimmy. Hey, guys. Hold on. Let me play you in, and thank you for waiting, Jim. No problem. I've had a day. And, uh, never mind. Uh, it's time for uh, the, the guy with the world's greatest website, www.mrskin.com. This will pull us all out of our funk. Uh, you know, I'm sorry. I'm, I'll pull myself out of this, too. You know, i gotta, I got to stop trying to call her during every commercial break. Today. Well, you know, you do what you got to do. I mean, God Almighty. I mean, anybody gives you crap about that, walk up my own shoes. I'm, well, I'm obsessed about that. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm more obsessed about, though. Hot chicks naked in the movies. Yeah, uh, I, absolutely. And here now is uh, Jim McBride, uh, www.mrskin.com. Uh, Jim, I'll tell you first off that I normally, you know, I go to the site and I order movies off the site mm-hmm. based on what you've said. Last week, one of my neighbors, a guy that you would never think even listens to this show, one of those guys who, when I see him like at barbecues or, or the street, dinner, whatever it is. He's always one of these guys, where's your station on the dial? Oh, yeah, yeah, we get that a lot. We get that a lot. And what does you do? Here's the thing. I see him uh, over the weekend, and he says, I hear 
heard Mr. Skinner. Now, all of a sudden, he makes no bones about the fact. Right. Not only does he know where the show is on the dial. Right. He listens. He goes, I heard Mr. Skin. The woman you were talking about who was totally naked. Was that the girl in Austin Powers? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no. He said, was that? I'm trying to think of the girl. Was that the girl? Jerry Maguire. <laughs> and I said, yeah, Kelly Preston, Jerry. They kind of look similar. Oh, he yeah. said, she's naked? I said, yes. All of it? <laughs> and I said, yeah. So I give him the site. They gave him a password. Because, you know, I figure, what the hell. Well, you know, it's almost like being a drug dealer. Go <laughs> on, enjoy. First time free, I, I said, you go on one time free. And I said, I'm going to change the password. <laughs> so you can only use it one time. And, it, right. and Jim... He's registered now as a regular user. Great. Called me up, ordered the movie. I gotta go on. I gotta buy it because my 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 uh, little password promo promotional password doesn't work. You what? Really? Yeah, yeah. You're, oh, you're... That, that, uh, let me hook you up off the air. That's not a problem. All right. I, I'll, yeah, I'll, you guys I'll, don't. Yeah. yeah, you guys would never have to uh, join. That's because I really. I mean, I, you know, I never talked to anybody about it, and I've never mentioned it on the air. <laughs> but I've, I've I've been to that site like 150 times trying to get through with my little. <laughs> but anyway, stuff. that that's a testimonial. That oh, uh, you know, I'm, uh, the testimony is also. I mean, that is a website with somebody we have on the show. I'm constantly uh, trying to to get on there. Now, this guy who I didn't think even remotely knows what we do. Not only did he listen, he remembered MrSkin.com. And Kelly Preston. I mean, Kelly Preston. Special. And he then registered, joined the site. Yeah, and it's a great site. I mean, it really, really, it's fun. It's so much fun. There's so much garbage out there that, that this is really, it's just a blast. Anyway, it? so there's a success story for you, Jim, that this guy... Oh, I appreciate it. Thanks. This guy apparently is, is Boner City, Kelly <laughs> Preston, and... <laughs> Uh, so the quote from him, and then I'll let you get on with this week's stuff. The, the quote from him shows really what a perv this guy is. <laughs> that when I spoke to him later in the week, it's one of those deals you're driving by and he's put out his trash can. Right. Mm -hmm. And I go, hey, did you join Mr. Skin? He goes, oh, yes. <laughs> I said, did you get the movie? Oh, yes. And you know on that site, they tell you exactly where to go to find the scene. <laughs> I said, I'm aware, he said. Do you know she was only 20 when that movie was made? <laughs> <laughs> so the guy's like, great A per. <laughs> anyway, great job last week. Uh, Jim, this week in the theaters, is there anything? Well, the big movie coming out tomorrow is Too Fast, Too Furious. It's the sequel to the Vin Diesel flick, uh, Fast and the Furious. Now, the bad news is, of course, the movie is the summer, the dreaded summer PG-13. Uh -huh. Uh, the good news is no Vin Diesel in the movie. Uh, <laughs> the, there is a hot uh, Latin babe in this movie called uh, Eva Mendez that I know a lot of guys are going to be asking me about after they see this, but um, she's not naked in this movie. She's been in, she's in a bikini in the flick, but you probably see this. Remember the, the Denzel Washington flick Training Day? Yeah. Sure. Well, there's a scene where uh, Ethan Hawke walks in on Denzel Washington. With, the, with his woman? Yeah. And oh. the woman is Eva Mendes. That oh. shows full frontal. Yeah. Yeah. So, She's um, hot. Yeah, so that's the deal. She is not naked in Fast and the Furious, but if you want to see the hot babe from that movie, Eva Mendes Naked, check out about an hour and 50 minutes into Training Day, uh, a quick <laughs> flash of fur in the bedroom. It's very nice. You want to go to MrSkin.com and you type in the name Eva Mendes, and there you get the scene from Training Day. Ethan Hawke walks into the bedroom, and she's naked. You know, uh, Jim, about Fast and the Furious, the original, was that PG-13? Oh, pardon me? The, the first Fast and the Furious, was that 13? Yes, I believe so. Maybe I'm not 13? positive. Because isn't there a scene in that movie right in the beginning when they're first starting to race when a girl comes over and lifts up, lifts up her top and says, if you win, these are going to be yours? I think something like that. And puts a guy's hand right on her. Yeah, mm. right, but it's not really it's not really nudity. It was a PG-13 flick. Okay, all right. Anyway, um... Yeah, but that, and, and you know, that's the thing. It's just uh, a real quick uh, on my soapbox. Uh, if you watch the the uh, highlights for this Fast and the Furious, they show these wild car chases, cars going under speeding trucks and, and getting crushed. That's PG-13. That's okay. A brief breast flash would turn this into an R movie. Yeah, exactly. It's, just, it's, it's not right. Yeah, it is not right. And continue your crusade. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I've really done so much to, to improve on things. But we will look forward to having soapbox. you visit us in Washington as you testify before Congress. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah they let me anywhere near that place. <laughs> if you've seen Training Day, and this girl is going to be the new Fast Furious, Eva Mendez, 
Go right there. There's a picture. There's Denzel's face, mm -hmm. and there she is. And background. And I can't. Is that? There's a better. Um, is that Bush? I just showed you. It, it was a quick thing where she's jumping out so fast. You, we really had the. It, it's going to be a tiny bit blurry because of the speed. But there's other mm -hmm. pics from that scene where you get a great butt shot that's crystal clear. I just wanted to show you guys the the fur flash. <laughs> ah, let's uh, move on. Okay. The DVDs uh, this week, um, they're releasing um, two Sigourney Weaver movies uh, this week. Um, one is an old movie. They're both mid -nine, or, uh, earlier, uh, Death of the Maidens from the mid-90s, and another movie called Half Moon Street. Both, I don't know if it's a coincidence, but it just so happens, new release section of your favorite video store, both of these movies are new on DVD. <laughs> Death, Death of the Maiden is one heavy movie. Yeah, yeah, directed by Roman mm. Polanski, actually. Jim, the new scenes are her on the exercise. By exercise bike are almost funny. Yeah, well, that's the thing. That's what I wanted to, to mention. I first said with Death and the Maiden is uh, uh, mm. Ben Kingley's in the flick. It's it's directed by Roman Polanski, and, and Sigourney shows uh, some nice uh, breast shots in that. But Half Moon Street, ever since I you know was watching, uh, you know, as a kid when I was watching cable, and then in the early 80s and whatnot, I always loved the scene. And I have to say, the greatest topless stationary bike scene in movie history. Uh, there's not a lot of competition for this. But Sigourney Weaver plays a prostitute. There's one scene where she's having a conversation with this guy, and she's just riding a, a stationary bike topless. I just love it. There you it. go. Now, yeah. that, uh, Jim, this, this begs uh, the next question, and I see, and we've done some research on your site. When you see Sigourney Weaver topless in this movie Half Moon Street... And I threw it, yeah, I know what you're going to get to. You go, okay. Well... How many of you have seen Galaxy Quest yeah. with Tim Allen? Well, That's I, why I, sent, I, I threw that in as a bonus, uh, because I wanted to prove that actresses do a little work over the years to make themselves bigger and better. So the question in Galaxy Quest is, is that a push-up bra, or has Sigourney Weaver had boob work done? I think it's pretty obvious boob work if you, if you um, look at how perfectly shaped they are in Galaxy Quest, if you look at the fullness of them, that no push-up bra could turn those mid-80 party hats into <laughs> into perfectly well-rounded uh, boobs. I sent that to you guys strictly to, to see kind of a before and after. And, uh, you know, I don't know for sure, but it's, it's the evidence is, is pretty clear. How great is this? You go to, to MrSkin.com, and you can actually compare Sigourney Weaver, topless, on a on an exercise bike, and right next to it, although she's not naked in this movie Galaxy Quest, she's got the uh, the Star Trek uniform. That's yeah, and I undone. completely agree with Jim on this. That you, you you really, I don't think a push up bra could turn what we see on that exercise bike. Yeah, into what we're seeing in Galaxy. Quest. Look at this one right here, especially. Yeah, exactly. That's not. I mean, that's pushing. An awful lot of it. But they can do amazing things. I mean, they showed that with Julia Roberts in uh, Aaron Brockovich, mm -hmm. that they really can take... There's a lot of technology out there. Yeah, right. That's the like industrial light the, magic. The, I always... Uh, whenever I see breasts that are perfectly round, right. it always makes me think fake. Right. Yeah, but look right. at Sigourney Weaver from uh, Half Moon Street, where she's on the exercise bike. Do you think Julia Roberts' boobs in real life look that bad? I, I don't know. It's hard to say. But I think the, I think it's a boob job too. I really do. Yeah. Anyway, it's very uh, very interesting. Man, she's got the body of like a fourteen year old girl. Not that I would know. This is really fascinating because it really huh? is. Yeah. Uh, Does this look look like a fourteen year old girl to you? And, uh, or or much older? You know, I, she's not looking good in some of I'm these pictures. I'm asking the wrong person. Where's Joe? Now you might be asking the wrong question. <laughs> yeah. Let me have Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. what I think. Get, get Broyle in here. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Sigourney Weaver. That's a pretty good shot. And uh, finally, oh, that's I a good movie in Galaxy Quest. I like that movie, too. So we've got some Liv Tyler action here. Yeah, I wanted to mention they're, they're releasing this week on DVD on uh, the movie Empire Records, which was a 1995 movie. Now, it's coming out as a, as a DVD special fan edition, whatever the hell that means. Um, but the bottom line is what, what's cool about Empire Records, I want to stress, no nudity. But uh, you get to see a young Renee Zellweger in her underwear, which is kind of a throwaway. Uh, in this movie because there is a strip tease scene done by an even younger Liv Tyler who was wearing like the Catholic schoolgirl plaid skirt 
You know what I'm talking about? Right, yeah. Right. Like a, and his sweater, and they, it was just one of the sexy things. She goes into, uh, there's a record executive there, and she does a strip tease for him. And it is, all you guys out there that love that uh, Catholic school girl look, yeah. is, uh, is just an amazing scene. It's one of the sexier scenes in a in a movie I've ever seen. They're releasing it on DVD this week. I, I, I'm not Liv Tyre, Tyler. It, it is the closest we're going to get to see her naked. I know in Armageddon, Ben Affleck was playing with animal crackers on her belly and on her boobs. Oh, no, she's done a good nudity. The movie Stealing Beauty from 1996. She had a real oh, nice topless shot. The Kevin Smith movie. Correct. Correct. Yeah, it was uh, actually um, it was a Bernardo Bertolucci movie from... Sorry. Uh, yeah, she was a, a young girl that went off to Italy, and it's uh, it was actually the year after Empire Records, and it's uh, she has one scene where a guy's doing a portrait of her, and uh, they pull her dress down so that he could do a naked portrait of her, and then another where she's in the bathtub and uh, reaches out of the tub to get something, and you see some, uh, uh, you know, her her, her topless. So, uh, Stealing Beauty is the Liv Tyler movie with, oh. with the nudity. Uh, Jim, hold on. We've just done some research on your own site, and... We put in the name Sigourney Weaver. Right. And we've come up with, from MrSkin.com, a movie called A Map of the World. Oh, yeah. And this is from the year 2000. Uh, Sigourney Weaver in the bathtub. Now, Mike, looking at this, uh, uh, Jim, what year did Half Moon Street come out? Half Moon Street came out about 1986. Right, so, so it was Mike, like a mid-80s movie. That, yeah, I got, got that right, one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Here they are in a bathtub in the year 2000. There has been some work done to Sigourney Weaver's jugs. Oh, yeah. Don't you think? Oh, yeah. No question about it. Take a I, look. I, I think so. Especially, uh, after, especially after those Death of a Maiden pictures. She's also lying down, though, so it's, uh, she's lying right, back in the tub. Hold on. Here's another one from Mr. Skin Dante. This is what's great about this site. We're talking about it. Lisa and Charlie go back to the site and pull up. Here's a picture of her sitting up in bed from the movie A Map of the World from MrSkin.com. All right. You tell me if they, those don't look better than they did in the 80s. They're the same. I don't think so. I believe they're the same. I think that there's anywhere again. else in the world where people are analyzing Sigourney Weaver's breasts like we are today. Isn't this beautiful? Mike, I don't think they're the same. They are, look at these two pictures. I don't think they are. Look at them close. If you're going to have work done, it would be more dramatic. You could tell. Look, those are the same breasts. If you were going to have work done and you were Sigourney Weaver and you wanted to get a rap going that you were a serious actress like Meryl Streep, you might just have a little lift and a little bit added. Look at the position of the nipple. That's what I, I hold as evidence. Uh, mm -hmm. And I say to you, look at the fullness and richness of the cup. <laughs> All right, Jim, I have to ask you a question. Do we have any definitive proof? that Sigourney Weaver has indeed had this surgery done. No, there's no definitive proof. It's just all... Uh... And where, where, where do you want to line up on this? Because you are the ultimate judge. Well, I think um, you got to remember Galaxy Quest was before a map of the world. It was a year or two before. Now, there's always the possibility. This is a possibility. She had work done for the Galaxy Quest bra and cleavage scenes and then maybe didn't like them and got rid of them. But I think... She had work done. That's my opinion. Well, right. We got a guy on the phone who says in Galaxy Quest, it's it's one of those prosthesis things. Prosthetic, yeah, where you yeah. Which she puts, which and they have those. Have sure. you heard of that, Jim? Oh yeah. Okay, so I, I guess on Sigourney Weaver, I I think based on the evidence that I've seen on MrSkin.com, mm -hmm. I'm going to say she has had a real fine boob job, mm -hmm. not a Pam Anderson. Boob and I'm going to agree to disagree. I really don't think she has. I, I think because the, based on a map of the world. Where she's sitting up, there's the similar position, and uh, there's serious droopage <laughs> in the map yeah. of the world. We've never analyzed breasts this significantly on the show before. But then how do you possibly, how do you account for these Galaxy Quest boobs? Because I know that women can do amazing things. With they, they have little, they, they don't only, they have these little things that, that go under the boob. They're mm -hmm. not just, yeah. it's not just a push-up bra, it's a little... Like well, piece of rubber that they put underneath there. And it's just the biggest <laughs> hoax that's ever been <laughs> yes. perpetuated upon mankind. Well, what's, what's a boob job but a hoax, anyway? Right. Yeah, but here's the deal with the boob jobs. Yeah. So you meet her at the bar, you bring her home, you open up the shirt, they're there. Right. I, yeah, good point. You know,
you know, she's got like one of these water bras or whatever this right. thing is. You get her home, you open it up, and, you know, you're sitting there with uh, Dikembe Matumbo. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, good segment again this week, and I have to mention uh, the website is www.mrskin.com. Best site ever. Uh, I live there, and uh, please give a, a password to Lisa so Mike can get it. No problem. Just uh, have her hold. I'll get her one. Okay, hold on. Just okay. Thanks, Jim. All right, thanks. thanks. Thank you, my friend. Here he is, Jim McBride. World-class perv. Fantastic. And you know what? You can go to that website and have the kind of spirited discussions that we just mm -hmm. had. We did. Uh, say, Robert. Yes, sir. There you go. Thank you, my friend. No problem. Standing by. There you go. Got the music. Um, we're moving on to the next segment. Very good. And we're giving away today's Hooters trip. To Myrtle Beach. Myrtle Beach! And we've not done this for, I think, four months. The 1-900 medical information line game. I am excited about this. Yeah. So you get to play against Mike, you get to play against Buzz. And if you beat them at this game, which of course is to pick the funniest medical ailment. Right. Uh, I think it's like a pyramid thing. Two yeah. out of three, three in a row. Uh, you're going to win a trip for two to Myrtle Beach with a two-night... Three day stay. Wonderful prize. At the Sea Watch Resort from Hooters Air. Jet service out of BWI. Hooters girls on every flight. For reservations, call 1 888 Fly Hoot or go to HootersAir.com. Hooters Air Flights, public charters operated by Pace Airlines. See tour participants for full terms and conditions of travel. Let me just really quickly show you how this works. We get into the system, and you call us at 877-365-3636. information library. Here we go. If you would like to continue this message in English, press 1. Okay. Please listen carefully to the following options. Okay. To reach our health information library, press 1 now. Welcome to Inova Health Sources Health Information Library. Okay, Mike. This information yep. is intended to increase your awareness. Now, this is where I give you guys two numbers. Mm -hmm. Issues and services. And you guess class. which one you think no. is the funny one. Mm -hmm. or as a Mike, your two numbers are... If you know the number of the topic you would like to hear, enter that four seven seven five eight. Mm -hmm. Enter one or four three seven two. Hear a list of sample topics. Seven seven five eight. Enter your four digit topic number, please. Welcome to the Health Information Library. Sleeplessness. Oh. Kids often do not like to go to bed. Now, is the other one funnier than sleeplessness? On the age of yes. two, and we'll find out. All right. Right. So we Relax. jump. We push five. To speak to a health source representative, press the star key or enter another four-digit topic. What was the other number? 4372. Welcome to the Health Information Library. Bleeding gums. <laughs> yep. Funny yeah. than sleepless. You know, I went, with, I went with a couple mm -hmm. that weren't out-of-the-park home runs, right. but you see... Bleeding gums is certainly funnier mm -hmm. than sleeplessness in children. Amen. So, you guys calling in will play against Mike. Right. And then if you if you don't beat Mike, you play against Buzz. Very good. And it, whoever gets three in a row first from the telephone wins mm -hmm. the trip to Myrtle Beach on Hooters Air. It's that easy. Yeah. Everybody loves the medical information game. I do too. And yeah. you're starting out very mellow, <laughs> and they get better and better. <laughs> well, I didn't. I didn't want to give you some of the great ones sure, right up front. Absolutely. So uh, call now to play the game. We'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. Look, I'm not back in 10 minutes. They call the cops. Standard operating procedure. Here's some standard operating procedure. Stay the f*** away from Tony Soprano. Shut the f*** up and listen. It's over. Kabish. Over and done. You call or go anywhere near him or his family. And they'll be scraping your nipples off these fine leather seats. It's on in my show. God damn it. The Don and Mike Show. Yeah, yeah, now. Uh, tomorrow you'll bear with us. We're not here. Uh, Lars got his high school graduation once in a lifetime. Uh, Monday on the show, Homo Joe and Cheryl the Big Dyke are going to the Gay Pride Parade in D.C. They'll have tapes of that. You know, Bob Hope has turned 100. We've not celebrated. We have something special. There we go. Uh, also, uh, Joe Ardinger, a special uh, feature on Joe, uh, coming up on the uh, show very soon. And uh, money. We 
got so much money. We got money. We got trips. We got prizes. And we got budget, everything on this show. We have budgeted money that the company's given us that we've not given away yet. Wow. And, uh... Mike, I think you're going to be happy. I speak for everybody when I say some of the money will be given away with Tom Foolery and hijinks. Yes. Some of the money will involve nakedness. You know what? It's about time. Thank you. Yeah, it's about thank time. You. Right. Uh, let's get right to uh, this the game, the uh, the you know the medical game, yeah. the health information line game. Very good. I'm ready. And Mike, well, you're going to play first, Yay. and you're going to play against who is this, Matt? Matt. Hi, Matt. Where are you from? Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. All right, Matt. Matt, uh, you know, I'd love you to win, but unfortunately I have to play as hard as I can here. Okay. Me Mike's, too. Mike's very competitive. Buzz is uh, pseudo-competitive. Yes. And uh, the deal is I'll give uh, each of you guys, uh, we'll start with you, for instance, and give you a starting point, and then I'll give you two more numbers, and the same with Mike, and the first guy to get three in a row, three funny illnesses in a row, wins. I, I, it's easier to do than it is to explain. Mm -hmm. So without okay. further ado, let's just start, and uh, we'll good. start with uh, Matt. Um, you know, now what it is, is you give Matt a choice of two, then you give me a choice of two. Whoever has the funniest between us wins, right? Well, no, you move on. Well, you move on. Because I don't want this to, to, to the game to be over in five seconds. Okay. Remember, it's like the num you get it, and then if you get it, you get to advance. Very good. Uh, and the goal is to get three funny ones in a row. Progressively funnier. Progressively funnier. Right? I forgot. Mike, you were speaking about a lightning round. We have played that before. I am, I understand, Dave. Welcome to the Health Information Library. Okay, one. Please listen carefully to the following options. Here we go. To reach our Health Information Library, right. press 1. Welcome to Innova Health Sources okay, Health Information yeah. Library. Yes. This information is intended to increase your... Please choose from the following numbers. Services ...throughout Innova. It should be seven seven six six for health care or seven seven six five number of the topic you would like to hear seven six six four digit number now welcome to the health information Larry thumb sucking all babies are born with a sucking reflex thumb sucking they will mm -hmm. suck on that's where you start this finger or anything else that my gomera I'm here Please choose between associate sucking with feelings of seven seven five zero. It's normal to suck on thumbs and fingers. Seven seven five one. About nine out of ten. Seven seven five zero. Enter your four-digit topic number. What was your number? Seven seven five zero. Welcome to the Health Information Library. Potty accidents. <laughs> The best time to begin okay. toilet. Sorry, that was kind of a funny one, but yep. there's one kind of funny one and not one, two and one that's not so funny in each right. round. Very good. Now to the second round. Matt, yours must be funnier than thumb sucking. Confident okay. and comfortable enough for success. All right, Matt, here are your choices. Many children, even when toilet trained, seven, six, one, two, to four or five. Or four, nine, five, one. The price seven six one two. Especially with in enter your four digit topic number, please. Welcome to the Health Information Library. Flat feet. Most people have a natural arch to now, their feet. We'll go to Buzz as the arbiter. Feet. Okay. Flat feet was not the funny one I had chosen. Mm -hmm. But is flat feet funnier than thumb sucking? Uh, the last one before that was potty accident. Excuse me. No, I think Mike had potty accident. I had potty accident. Okay. So and Matt had Matt had thumb sucking, and Buzz has to make the judgment as to whether Buzz flat feet is funnier than thumb sucking. I think thumb sucking is funnier. Yeah, it is. Matt. Treatment is not needed. Did nice plan with you. Sorry, Matt. will return. All right, see you, my friend. Walking. You should, however, wear good fitting, supportive shoes. Let's and that's go. another one off. Under the age of <laughs> Hello, uh, Rick. Hey, good afternoon, guys. You ready to play? No, rigid. Yeah, ready to play. Hey, flexible. All right, Rick. Congratulations. Pardon me? I want to say congratulations to your son and his graduation. Very nice. Ah, thank you. They may even cause that. Uh, Rick, here are your uh, choices. Are linked with 4912. 
four nine one three. Four nine one three. Enter your four digit topic number. Welcome to the Health Information Library. <laughs> Minor burns and scalds. Oh. First and uh, second. It's a good one to start. Oh, good start. Now, Mike, you've already advanced to the second round. Yeah, and I, all I have so far is potty accidents. So yours has to be funnier right. than potty accidents for you to continue. I understand, Bruce. Disruption or Mike, strength. yes. Because they involve only... Here are your choices. Uh-huh. Though painful, they take only two to five days to heal and do not leave scars. Second to five, two, two, six. Burns. The epidermis or of skin. five one seven seven side layer of skin is damaged. Burned skin is a model. I'm going to go with five and weepy. Two Through two six. Presence. Enter your it has to be funnier than potty accidents. Please. Welcome to the Health Information Library. Do you think you might be homosexual? Teen <laughs> years are in terms of sexual discovery. Uh, Learning about right. yourself. Okay, this Mike. Can Rock and roll. Well done. Thank you very much. Now, Rick. With same -sex friends. Yours just has to be funnier than, funnier than minor burns. It's a softball. Mm -hmm. Funnier than minor burns. That minor burns. That someone is only attracted <laughs> Here are your smithies. Here are your so, kind of choices. It's not just a stage of experimentation. Homosexuals have feelings of sexual attraction only for five two one nine. It's estimated that ten percent or five two homosexual two eight. Why some people are homosexual while others five two two eight was but there are two possible. And let me simply say to the censors, don't delete anything out because this is medical information. Right before birth, your call is Has now to be being funnier called. than minor burns. Oh, hold on. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. What happened? I, I pressed the wrong button. Can I hear somebody ringing? <laughs> the phone's locked up. No, it's just me. <laughs> it was ringing. Button. I think I pressed the number to get like live help. We have reached the Innova Health System. We're sorry, but all counselors and registrars are currently busy. Of so course. Callers. Mm -hmm. Good. Your Crazy. Important. That's happening. Please hold in our next available staffers. All right, hold on. i got to start over again. Got a medical man. They're all tied up now. Anyway, does, there, does everybody remember the numbers that Rick has? Yes. Yeah. yeah he's Welcome great. to the Health Information Library. Gotcha. Okay. If Press you would like to, please Five, listen two, carefully two, eight. to the following options. Okay. To reach our Health Information Library, right. press 1... Welcome to Innova Health. Okay, he wants 5228. Right. This information is... Welcome to the Health Information Library. Not doubt on that, sensors, because we are talking about a medical line. Right. Now, that is, uh, that is better than minor burns. Both men and women. So now we go to Mike. And, and I have gone through potty accidents. And do you think you are homosexual? Mm -hmm. This is a non <laughs> So yours has, so mine has to be funnier than do you think you're a homosexual? Right. Many boys start to masturbate. Okay, Mike. Usually girls start later when they are well into their teen years. Mm -hmm. It is normal. Seven, one, five, seven. Religious training that tells them masturbation is wrong. <laughs> or, or it does not cause physical or mental health problems. Seven, one, seven, two. Or seven, one, five, seven. Enter your four-digit topic number, please. What was it again, please? Seven, one, five, seven. What happened? I'm sorry. Mm. I've missed your dialing instructions. Please enter the category... 7157. Welcome to the Health Information Library. Painful periods. <laughs> About 10% of adolescent and Wait, is it funnier than do you think you're a homosexual? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I don't think so. Rick! Yes, sir. The you have to beat. Usually decreases with what does he have to beat, Mike? He has to beat. Uh, his first one was minor burns, women of then masturbation. Age. It has to be funnier Painful than masturbation. Are a symptom of another All right, let me look. Are called secondary Give me a second. Listen to this. This health topic covers primary dysmenorrhea or menstrual pain that does not result from another medical problem. Uh -huh. The exact cause of primary dysmenorrhea is not known. However, it is... Your choices are... ...fractions of the uterus. 7410... Oh. 
45271. Can be sharp or dull. Seven, the first one, 7420. Back, the one China, four, 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 four,
right, baby thanks. job. All right, let's see if we can get one more Cut. person. Cut. He's unbeatable. Now, Mike, let's see if a, a girl can beat you. Very good. She can um, go first. Rebecca. Hello. Hi there, Rebecca. You ready to play? I sure am. All right, Rebecca, here are your numbers. One serious form of tooth decay. Your numbers are? Children. Results from the bottle the child uses. Seven, three, liquids containing three, one, juice, and others. Or four, four, one, three. Let's go with um, seven, three, three, one. This is acids that attach to tooth. Enter your four-digit topic number, please. Welcome to the Health Information Library. Feet. What is normal for children? The joints of a baby's feet and ankles are extremely flexible. Mike, the other number was 4413. Enter your four-digit... Welcome to the Health Information Library. Diarrhea. There you go. Diarrhea. I'm so sorry, Rebecca. Wow. Bye, Rebecca. Urgent and frequent Mike's got the touch. I, well, I'm not even playing on that one, Buzz. Range uh -huh. in severity from a brief annoyance. All right, let's try one more listener. Illness. Diarrhea. All right, you know what? I'm gonna, Mike, i got to take you out of it. You're too All right. good. Okay. It's just got to be listener versus listener. Very good. Skip. Certain drugs. Are you there, Skip? Can also occur from hey, Skip. Or David. I'm sorry, David. And All right, there's David and there's Skip. Guys, are you both on the line? Yes. Skip. Skip. I'm asking for Skip. Oh, God damn it. Wow. This is just impossible. Uh, all right, David. Yes. David. David, what's going on in the background there? Uh, nothing, really. All right, uh, David. Does anybody hear something yeah, in the background? Something. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, what is that? Uh, some light music. I'm gonna take a stool, actually. Okay. Just serious and Just require medical care. Um, food poisoning. Here you go. Jack. Jack's gonna win. Hey, Jack. During yes, recovery, one should drink... Jack, I'm just going to pick two good ones. To replace long so we're going to have a winner on Very good. Jack, do you want five, four, zero, zero, or do you want... Resume eating gradually. Four, seven, two, one. Five, four, zero, zero, please. Good one. <laughs> Enter your four digit. Welcome to the Health Information Library. Anal fissure. Yeah. 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 That's it, because I knew the five the fours were the, the butt. Of the digestive tract. No, they're not. All right. movements leave really? the body. Mm -mm. And not all of them. Fissure For instance. is a tear or crack in the lining of the anus. Ouch. What about an anal fistula is an abnormal opening in the skin. Near what about five, four, eight, anal three? Fissure may five, four, eight, three. By passing... To speak to a health... Oh dear! Right, it just hung up. Did it again. Anyway, that was hearing aids. Hearing ah. aids. Okay, but he got it with rectal bleeding. Uh, <laughs> congratulations. Uh, is the guy on the phone? Hello, Dave. Did Dave hang up? Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> What is going on with people today? I don't know. Well, you know, it might have been operator error. I don't know. I mean, I've got the one set of phones over here, and I'm trying to dial the four. And You'll then the take number. dollar number 100. Well, we're we're going to do that later. Let's just take a call see if uh, I, I got a way to do this. Hello, Donna Mike. Who's this? Skip. What's your name? Skip. 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 We, we found him. Yeah. You just say he said this is skip. You said skip, what's your name? Oh, I'm right. sorry. You're doing a lot Hello. of stuff. Skip? Hello. Yes. All you have to do is name any of the winning diseases or illnesses that we had on the show today. All right. A rep of bleeding. Yeah. Yeah. Bleeding. That's job. how easy that was. And, I, and that was a pretty damn clever way to figure out how to get out of here. There you go. <laughs> Rectal bleeding has won you a trip for two to Myrtle Beach with a two-night, three-day stay at Sea Watch Resort from Hooters oh Air my God. with Hooters girls on every flight. Uh, for information, call one triple eight fly Hoots or go to HootersAir.com. Awesome. I pray when you go that this doesn't happen to you. I'm sure it won't, but I'm just going to give you a little uh, 
Well, a little warning. Health information library. Careful. Following options. Yeah. Reach our health information library. Press 1 now. Welcome to Innova Health Sources Health Information Library. This information is intended to... Welcome to the Health Information Library. Venereal diseases. <laughs> I hope it doesn't wow. happen to you, my friend. Diseases that may be trans... Enter your four-digit topic number, please. Welcome to the Health Information Library. Chlamydia. <laughs> Enter your four-digit... Welcome to the Health Information Library. Gonorrhea. Fully transmitted. Enter your four-digit topic number. Welcome to the Health Information Library. Herpes. Genital herpes is a sex. Hope it don't happen to you. Good luck. Oh, boy, I hope not either. Have a great time on your trip. You're American. Hey, thanks, guys. Thank you for listening. Hold on just a second. And that's how we play the yeah. uh, medical information library. All right. Yeah. Everybody likes that. Sorry I'm so good at the game, Don. Yeah, I'm so good at picking the numbers. One most often grows on the body above the waist. It causes cold sores or fever blisters. Type yeah. two occurs most often below the waist. Below the waist. Genital sex organ herpes either uh-huh Oh, look at that. Someone just, oh, they hit the door. They just deleted that out. You know, the thing is, it's a medical information line, mm -hmm. but they deleted it out. They were talking about herpes. It's ludicrous. Yeah. yeah. I know it is. That one doesn't make sense. I don't get that. What but we're going to get an explanation right now. Hi, Charles. What doctor are you having this discussion with? I'm having the discussion with the ANOVA Health Source. This is a comedic bit. <laughs> no, it's not. No, this is an informational. We are very serious. Right. This is informational. Okay. So it it wasn't the... Uh... Oh, stop it. Okay. <laughs> he did his best. He's doing his Thank job, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, oh, hey, Charles. Hold on, Charlie. Before you, before you go, would you do me a favor? Would you just read that, please? Put your own name in, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. Would you just read that for me, please? Charlie. Charlie. Give it a really good read. I, I'm not a good reader. As I you know, know you're not. Just All do right. your best. Attention, Fairfax, Virginia. <laughs> Pastor Charles Broyhill, praying that you'll go see Michael Mara and the Crap Blues Band this Friday night at Fat Daddy's in the Fairfax Circle Center. What was that you laughed when you were saying it? What's, this, what's oh, the place? Fast Eddie. Thank you. In the Fairfax Circle Center. Thank you, Charlie. Beautiful Fairfax. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting in on this week's session. <laughs> you won't miss me at Fast Eddie's. Very good. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. Yeah, that was great. Wow. Boy, Thank you, Charlie. Nice job, Charlie. Okay. Well, you keep it fresh, Don. I'll give you credit. <laughs> Don, I'm trying. <laughs> you know, we're up against the clock, so here's what I think we're going to do. Okay. Um, we like Jeopardy. Uh, but we're not going to do Jeopardy this week because right. we don't have enough time. But you know what? Buzz, you're the best audience in the world. I love the Jeopardy. I love the way that Buzz shakes his head like, oh, what's going on? What's going on? Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing. It's the dumb question part. I'll just say mm -hmm. until next week. Okay. We'll just do the bit part. Ah, yeah, we'll chat I'm... with the lady. Oh, good. Yeah, we'll... With my lady? Yeah, we'll do Because I know you're just full of questions for yeah, her. We'll do the bit part. Excellent. And then, then when I, I got other stuff that we can do. Very good. We have to do one long break and one short break. Gotcha. So we'll, we'll save the, the Jeopardy stuff, the dumb questions until next week and we'll do the, the best part of Jeopardy the bit when we come right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. Uh, Our what? phone uh, computer's gone a little screwy. Is Leroy is there, on, still the there on, on, All right. on the top? Wait, on line seven, Roy? Yes. Yeah, okay. No, 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 line on one. On line one, good. Hi, Leroy. Hello. How are you? I'm okay. Good, you have a comment, Leroy. Yes, can you hear me okay? Yes, very well. Perfectly. Quite well, yep. Great. So, uh, good afternoon, John Hi. Persons. I'm, I'm glad to be listening to the show. Thank you. I just want to say, as an African-American, mm -hmm. being that I am educated, have put myself through school, and you could obviously hear that I don't engage in, uh, let's say, urban colloquialisms when I speak. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's made a difference in your career, Lori? It's made a huge difference yeah. in my career. Yeah. Mm. And uh, a lot of the difference also comes from uh, engaging in ass play and listening to the Don and Mike show. Yeah, well, good. Yeah, <laughs> good. That's great. You really you really acquitted yourself, Leroy, and how proud you must be. Too bad, Leroy, you just sounded so smart and ended up being so stupid. The Don and Mike show. Where an uninformed listener is our best customer. The Don and Mike show. Now, listen, we still have this uh, trip to uh, Los Angeles. Give away. We'll do it here in a couple of 
seconds. We're going so nuts on the time today. Normally we play Jeopardy, but we want to, you know, we made a commitment. What is the dumb thing Alan says about the pig and the... Uh, the chicken made a contribution, but the pig made a commitment. Right, well, we right we made a commitment to the pig. <laughs> Buzz is the pig. <laughs> Would Buzz be the pig in that case? No, no, Buzz, no. Is Buzz is the chicken. No. Buzz is the plate. I mean, we made a commitment. We're the pig. So I made a commitment to Buzz and to you guys that we were going to get more news segments on. Right. So we don't have time to do Jeopardy. And uh, everything, everybody agrees the best part of Jeopardy is the first part. So yeah. we just save the dumb questions uh, for next week. And let's, uh, let's wheel in today's guest. Oh, so toast the minutes. She has a clip. Degree oh. oven until you can just sort of smell the nuts. <laughs> and then remove them from the oven and place them on a clean cloth. Yeah, you know who it and is. And notice when I rub the nuts with the cloth, the skins kind of just fall off. You want to get the nuts as clean as possible. Every speck doesn't have to come off. Yeah. But um, if you rub hard enough, most of the skin will pop right off the nut. Yes, Martha. It's a simple way to do a lot of nuts in a short period of time. All right, so that's, that's the Jeopardy thing. But we're not playing the game today. We're just, we're just doing the setup with the bit, and now here, here she is wearing a wonderful orange jumpsuit. Wow. How are you? Martha Stewart. I'm sorry I was late. I was making a Father's Day surprise box. <laughs> Were you? Father's Day is just around the corner, and I would venture to say your dad has saved every macaroni encrusted card he's ever got. <laughs> Not my dad, but that's that's another story. Martha, how about a handmade party blower? <laughs> Martha, it's a good thing. I've seen you on TV. All of my things are at Kmart for about another week. <laughs> I've seen you walk into courtrooms. I've seen you walk out of courtrooms. I think... Probably the first question anybody would ask you if they saw you was, why are we? What about that TV movie, honey? I really don't pay attention to all the rumors. I don't pay attention to movie magazines. They're all junk. Did you see... I don't read them. Did you see <laughs> Sybil Shepherd? I don't watch that type of thing. I think Sybil Shepherd's a tragic figure in American society right now. Someone that has to make her living, making fun of someone like me, someone who's done so much good for so many people. I'd like to focus on the positive, like decorating a pine cone. <laughs> what have you it's done? a wonderful way and an opportunity to decorate nature. What have you done good for a person, not even in today or yesterday because you've been in court, but in the last month? Just the other day I was showing people how to make party blowers. Uh, have you ever made your own party blowers? No, I haven't. These handmade party blowers are as much fun to create as they are to use. For a paper tongue that will curl properly, choose a decorative paper that's about the same weight as photocopy paper. Mm. I mean, you're talking I could about... go into all the details for you. You're talking sure. about like junk on your TV show. No, I'm talking about what is my life, no. my, my what, heart, my soul. What have you done? It's a good thing. What have you done in real life to help a real person out? Not through a TV show or a magazine Just or a cookbook. Just the other day, my neighbor was having trouble with her garden, and she was just a filthy mess. Mm. And I went over there, brought her some of my homemade muffins, <laughs> and said to her that weeding and thinning are hard work, and your knees are always the first to go. Why don't you spare them with this smart cushion? Mm. And I brought it from my own workroom. Mm. What's up with you and Puffy? Remember for a while yeah. when Sean Combs was seen everywhere with Martha Stewart? I went over to Puffy's house one evening. He's in the Hamptons, you know, and I have three houses there. <laughs> I dropped over and showed him how he could turn an avocado into a wonderful, lifelike marital aid. <laughs> it's you... true, and it's edible also when you're finished. Now, now I, I want to... I said, what up, G? I, I, I want to play both sides. I want to sure. say, on, on one hand... Yeah, I think you're being un unfairly prosecuted. Thank because, you. Thank you, Don. Because I really a, would love to be your best friend. You're a heinous, uh, pompous celebrity. I know your wife likes wine. On the other hand... Whether you're a novice or an aficionado, a wine <laughs> tasting party is, is an elegant and fun way to entertain and educate. <laughs> on the other hand, if you cheated on this Enron thing... Then Caring you, and discussing wines or... You deserve to get your, your teeth in the ringer. Then you can get jiggy with the yard clippings after you get done mowing your lawn. Hey, Martha? Don? What do you do about feminine odor? 
Feminine odor is a pesky problem, especially for those of us in the city on the go. I like to use a combination of baking soda and just some pine nuts ground up in my special grinder. <laughs> that combination makes the odor go away and you never have to deal with wetness. Have you ever thought about what's going to happen if the worst was to occur and that they get these charges against you and you actually have to go to jail? I've only thought about several things. How to decorate my prison cell, which is a tremendous chore due to the barren colors and the very stark atmosphere. I've also insisted that if I do have to go to the Huskow, I must have to wear a prison jumpsuit with a minimum 275 thread count. <laughs> you know, I do. You. We had that discussion on the show the oh, other day. Yeah. I used to be a model. <laughs> yeah. Did you know that? Back, yeah, I know. Back in the I was a model. Age. I really was. You don't believe me? No, I saw the TV movie. I know that you were like uh, Miss Glamour magazine or something like that. Unfortunately, in this day and age, I think it's very difficult for Wall Street and society in general to accept a woman as a hard-nosed bitch. May I ask you, <laughs> your show, uh, your TV show for the longest time was on CBS. And I know I've seen photographs of you with CBS executives. Uh, yes. Have you ever met a man named Mel? I have indeed. In fact, and? I impressed him quite, quite significantly. How did you impress? Because he's our boss. I, How did you impress him? I brought him a basket, homemade, mind you, of my <laughs> fresh cranberry muffins, mm. and he was smitten from day number one. I also told him how to take care of that pesky eyebrow problem. Oh, we find him to be about the most negative motivator that we've ever met. No matter what you do for him, it's never good enough. Has he ever given you a compliment? Well, he said to me that, young lady, and that was the first compliment, mm -hmm. what have you done for me lately? <laughs> and I showed him some of the revenues that Martha has made. Martha Stewart Online, Martha Stewart Magazines, the Marcus Martha Stewart guest spots on the television shows, mm -hmm. and the Martha Stewart television show itself. Not to mention my relation with Kmart, where I like to think I raised the standard of all the things that they were doing. But, uh, as no, soon no. as our deal no. was completed, it was a good thing, and no. I thought it was time to get down to some very serious insider you know trading. I want to have <laughs> a, a second here uh, to have a private conversation. So let's go to commercial. Uh, it, it, right. let, let's go to break. We'll come right back. Uh, we'll have two minutes. Uh, Buzz, take us to commercials, please. All right. Uh, the Don and Mike Show, featuring Martha Stewart, will be right back. Are we clear? We're clear. Uh, how much time do I have? I've got many things that I need to do. Two minutes. Okay. This is boring me. This is boring me. This is very dull, and I hope you well, appreciate this. You know, you sent me the check to come on your program, and I'd like you to promote the website, the magazine, and everything else that I asked, mister. Listen, here's what I'd like. Don't F with me. Do you know who I am? Here's what I like from I'm you. I'm Martha Effing Stewart. Hey, hey, bitch. Here's what I like Don't from you. I love it when you talk to me like that. <laughs> Why don't we get you right now on the counter? Lift up that top. Here you go. Hold on. Oh, Take a look at, look at, would you like to see the twins? Would you, like to, would you like to see Martha's twins again? Yeah. You know it. You make me so hot. Hey, you really do hey, so hot. Hey, I've been hey, very stressed out, and they said to me that we'd be able to do the thing that we did last time I was on the show. We can, Pat. How much time do we have before the commercials are over? How much time, Buzz? 30 seconds. Hey, but no, give us another minute. Okay, we'll minute. Play another commercial. All right. You notice my twins, one is much bigger than the other. <laughs> History. I call this one dog toy. I call this fun bunch. Hey, honey. Yeah, Martha. Sweetie. Martha's girl. How come you never? Girl. How come you ever talk in public about Kmart the way you've talked with me about Kmart? What do you really think about Kmart? I think it's the playground of the redneck. You know that. Then yeah. why do you, why do you say you're saying you got high quality? They shouldn't sale? have a white sale. They should have a white trash sale. <laughs> do you know how much money they put in Martha Stewart's pocket? It'll be, basically pay for all my legal troubles, and that's going to go away also. Hey, can people, I see people recognize me as who I am. Do you know who I am? I'm an icon. Hey, whore! Because all these dumb house brows don't have any idea what they're doing, but they'll spend money like water while their husbands have their noses to the she ground. She loves talk dirty to yeah. Hey, whore! Yes, talk to me, Donnie. Hey, dirty whore! Want to see the clam? Let me see your bush. Here you go. Hold up. Take a look at that. Now. There, that's all for you, big boy. Now, I want you to get that wooden spoon. If I have to tell you something, seriously, stop. I don't want to play the spoon game right now. You want me to do that thing with the spoon that I did the last time? Yeah. That's because I brought you soup. I brought you that fresh gazpacho from the tomatoes in my garden, but I'm going to tell you this right now. Yeah. If I go to prison, will you come and see me with the conjugal visits, please? You promised you would. I'm balding in clumps. <laughs> 
How much time before the commercials are over? Mm-hmm. Spread your legs. For you? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> I'm really doing it. You are. It's a good thing. You are such a whore. Mm-hmm. It's because it's you. It's you, baby. I love you. I want to tell you that. Thank I you lo- very much. I love you because you're mean. Yes. Now, yeah. all of them. You should, you, you should have heard me in my lawyer's. Do me one more favor. You should have heard me in my lawyer's meeting today. Listen, what did I get, tell them what for? Got to get back on the air. But do me a favor. While your pants are off. Yes. Squat over this mirror for me. Sure. Here we go. Please. Here, take a look. Oh, there. Martha's baby. your girl. Baby. Martha's your bitch. Baby. There you go. Hey, the mirror is fogging up. <laughs> it's fogging up. Your baby. mirror is fogging up. Baby. Martha loves, baby. Martha loves Johnny. Martha loves Johnny. Now, how much you. time do we have? Can we do it? We're back in 15. Who's my bitch? I'm your bitch. Who's my C word? I'm your C word. <laughs> it's a good thing. I'll what? fog up your mirror any day. What's Kmart? What's Kmart? Tell me. White trash land. I am so... Ten for you. F him. F him. I hate all those people that go to Cambridge. Oh, Martha, goddamn. Like I can improve the quality. Or like you can improve the quality of a pile of crap. Welcome so, back to the Don and Mike show featuring Martha Stewart. Now, here's Don and Mike and Martha. It's a good thing. Um, I'm here with Martha Stewart. Hello. And I just want to say... I'd like to say thank you to all of my fans, especially from Kmart, that have sent me the cards and letters and the little postcards just encouraging me and giving me their prayers and support. I think in the long term, everyone will find out that I will be exonerated from all of these charges mm. and go back to things that I enjoy, like making doilies, <laughs> carving fudge, and also <laughs> decorating pine cones. <laughs> when are you going to roast... Martha, I'm sorry. Our personal life is creeping into this. No, you know that you said you vowed. Whether you are, then I'll ask you a question. There's no way. When are, you, when are you going to be roasting more nuts? I don't want to talk about nuts. I want to talk about nutmeg root. That's right. You can beat sexual tension any time with nutmeg root. It's a good thing. <laughs> what are you going to do? I like to put a little fresh coriander on my special spots. What are you going to do? What are you going to do if the price of your stock continues to nosedive? Fortunately. My financial acumen has resulted in a rather significant windfall over the last three or four years. And I can make things by hand. You're familiar with the gentleman, Rudolph, that was just found in the woods, and I'm not talking about the reindeer? Oh, yeah, no, yeah. I'm also a skilled survivalist. Oh, you mean that that guy that was the the bomber, the uh, the Olympic bomber? You know something? All Americans should realize that you can survive any tragedy if in each pocket you carry a lifetime supply of seasons. That's all you need is herbs, herbs, roots, and some spices, and that will get you through your day. Those raw lizards he ate would have been much better with some fresh rosemary. Seasons of a man's life. And a zest of a lemon can make anything palatable. Anything will slide down. That's my secret bedroom secret also. We've got to go. You've been listening to the Don and Mike Show with their special guest, Martha Stewart. It's a good thing. Thank you for having me. And thanks for listening. But you're clear. Clear. Mm-hmm. Do you want to know the truth about that? Really, we're off the air now. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. yeah. stolen so much money from all of the people at Martha Stewart mm-hmm. Living. Anyway, those people basically work jackasses. Crazy. Yeah, they're so 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 stupid. They don't have any idea. Those I've slots. got a windfall. My windfall is the profit sharing plan that I have all of my own employees. If they even scratch the surface of what I've really done with my finances, Ooh. it's incredible. Those little bitches and bastards mm-hmm. think that they're working for me because they think I'm America's sweetheart, but it's not true. I screw them like I've screwed everybody. And they don't have a thing on me. Who's my bitch? I'm your bitch. Who's my bitch? I'm going to roll in money until it sticks to me. And then I'll be your bitch and your C. Who's <laughs> on G? Scratch my itch. Yes, yeah, sir. You want me to do it? Scratch my anal itch. <laughs> Man. My, oh, my. I thought you didn't like that. That was one of the things we shared. I just want to go there, boyfriend. <laughs> you do it. I would. You know I would. Mm. Wow. Absolutely. With my teeth. <laughs> I'm sorry that we couldn't get to the hole. That's a, that's a shame. Jeopardy bit today. Just make sure I don't have to meet any of those a-hole executives around here. Oh, like Michael and Alan? No, Alan. <laughs> Just Alan? Just kidding. Oh, another clump of hair is gone. Oh, All right, Martha? I've been pulling my hair ever since the tension started. I love you, baby. It's a good thing, Doc. I love you, baby. You can visit me. Hang in there. I will hang in there. I'm on your side. And I will redecorate a prison. Don, can I say one last thing? Yes. Lick it. <laughs> Ta-ta for now. I love you all. Wow. Bye-bye.
Bye bye. There she goes. Wow. Good thing we, that we wasn't didn't. on the air. What a body babe. We didn't have time for the whole Jeff Hardy bit. Yeah, but God, that, that's yeah. what we would have done. That's that's Martha Stewart. <laughs> and then the good news is she'll be able to come back. I didn't know you two had a thing. Wow. I was unaware of that. Pretty odd. We don't have a thing. She's. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I, I tell you, I, I heard. I don't know how you heard. We were in commercial break. <laughs> okay. Commercial Play that break. fantasy all you want. Where's my mirror? <laughs> here's, where's my mirror? You don't want that back. It's busted. There's some blood on that mirror. <laughs> <laughs> we, will, we will be right back. Trip to L.A. Is the Don and Mike we'll Show. Give it away. A trip to L.A. next. Mike? You want to pamper somebody with an erotic birthday? It's or not mom anymore. Cheer someone out? Right. Think about dad on Father's Day. <laughs> no, it's for girls. Or for guys. All right. I say get dad something fun and different. And send him an erotic female pajama gram. It's a fantastic gift idea. He'll receive the soft <laughs> erotic pajamas along with a free lavender bath tea. No, she will. And a oh. gift card all delivered in a keepsake hat box that he'll love. He will. All right. I mean, listen, Father's Day is the holiday that, that's on the horizon now. He'll like all the brands like Crabtree and Evelyn. <laughs> Mike, excuse me, Crabtree and Evelyn. <laughs> it is. To send it, but I, I don't know much, but I know that. Uh, go to pajamagram.com and tell them Don and Mike sent you. Don and Mike, WKFK. This is the Don and Mike Show. Up to that point, Jerry had concealed his Percodan dependence. I walk out with Michael, and I collapse in the hallway. And blood came from every opening I had. Eyes, nose, ears, name it. Blood flow like the damn dike opened up. What had happened was that the Percodan was concealing the pain of a grapefruit ulcer. <laughs> They had me in surgery like in 20 minutes. I was bleeding to death. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. Funny man. They're the cheese in the devil's mouse trap. Don and Mike. Right, we'll give away the uh, trip to Los uh, Angeles here in just a second. Uh, Got strange and bizarre facts. You know, I got so much stuff on the show that we never get to. Uh, I don't know why I carry around this this big folder full of stuff because you never know when we're gonna grab it. We never get to it. I mean, one of the things I got is jail mail, right, for Joe Arthur wow. that we've never gotten to. Um, strange and bizarre facts. These are true facts from um, FunkySHI.org. I love this website. Every year, parks in London alone are doused in one million gallons of dog urine. Yeah. Wow. Mike, the germs present in human feces can pass through up to ten layers of toilet paper. Wait, 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 wait. wait. The germs that are present in your BMs mm -hmm. can pass through up to ten layers of toilet paper. Meaning that if you that's wad up, okay, I, I wad up more than that. Because yeah. um, ten layers, if you really, if you put that, that's not a big deal. Because if you put ten sheets of toilet paper, <laughs> you're so funny. You just had to look like you. I was exasperating you. <laughs> you had a little look. I'm just analyzing I'm, your facts, and you have a list in front of you. Yeah, and I know. So get to it. Get to it. I know you want to read your list. Uh, Go ahead. Let me see. <laughs> Several. I'll, I'll just refrain from commentary, even though the information you're giving could hurt people. <laughs> if, you, if you stacked up ten plies, you took individual ten pieces, pieces of toilet paper, and you stacked them up, there wouldn't be that big a space. No. All I'm telling you is Someone according, get me a roll. According to FunkyS.org. Right. The germs present in human feces can pass through up to ten layers of toilet paper. Single fly or double fly? Now, I'm not saying, Buzz, that you're going to see seepage. Right. But I'm saying the germs... According which to I believe. I'm so glad we got this roll, Rob, that had five sheets left. The strange and bizarre facts. This is the one. This is five. There you go. Let me let me just move past this. <laughs> Mike, do you know an average person's yearly fast food intake will contain twelve pubic hairs? No, Ooh. now that's gross. 
Do you know? Oh, that is foul. Do you know that annually <laughs> you shake hands with at least six men who have recently gotten their jerk on and have failed to wash their hands? <laughs> now, wow. how can anyone figure that out? Do you know that annually you will shake hands with at least 11 women? Who have recently gotten their jerk on and failed to wash their hands? Somehow that doesn't bother me as much. much. Yeah. Do you know that daily you breathe in one liter of other people's anal gases? <laughs> well, I know that from working in this studio. <laughs> Do you know that sharing a bag of chips, Doritos, potato chips, whatever, mm -hmm. with a friend gives you a 10% chance of ingesting a small amount of their feces? <laughs> <laughs> did you know? Getting funkier as you continue. <laughs> did you know? I don't even want to drink. I got a bottle of water here. I don't even want to drink it. Did you know that if you swim at a municipal pool oh, here we go. for an hour, you will ingest half a liter of urine? Oh, <laughs> oh God, that is awful. Half a liter. Wow. That's correct. Jesus. <laughs> did you know? This is like Howard Hughes material. You, you won't want to come out of your house after this. <laughs> Did you know, and we're all going to be going, mm -hmm. uh, most of us, to Charlie and Lisa's wedding very soon. Right. At an average wedding reception, <laughs> you have a 1 in 50 chance of getting a cold sore from one of the guests. Really? Hmm. Not making this stuff up. Wouldn't expect that. Did you know... That the longest recorded tapeworm found in the human body was 33 meters in length. Oh, my God. Wow. That's disgusting. That's Did you know that if your body's natural defenses failed, the bacteria in your gut would consume you within 48 hours, literally eating you from the inside out? Well, that's a... Now, wait a minute. I'm just that's a ludicrous statement because... It, the way the body's made, it, it, it couldn't happen. Do you know that in a lifetime, 22 workmen will have examined the contents of your dirty linen basket? Now I'm worried. Wow. Yeah, think about it. You've yeah. got people in your house Repairman, working on stuff. Kind of thing. They go, hey, look at these underpants. Yeah, they can have it if they want it. Yeah. If they want it, you know, go ahead, you know, suck the poison out. Yeah, this one you're going to love. <laughs> Do you know that on average, in the last year alone... Women fart three times more than men do? Yeah! That was mm. that. Yeah! Is that a good fact? That yeah. I like. That is a great fact. That is a wonderful fact. Last year, the average person in America, while they slept, swallowed 14 insects. <laughs> that I have heard that fact before, and of all the things you have read, that is the most disturbing to me. And specifically, <laughs> not with your mouth open and bugs crawling your not mouth. Not those little bed bugs that are that are there all the time. No, no they're, they're, they're like, like real bugs, like spiders and yeah, stuff. Yeah, ants and you know spiders and, and snakes and, and, and everything else. <laughs> I had a snake in my house this morning. I didn't even tell you that. I had a, a little baby, a little baby snake, and I think it was a bad one. Mike, in an average day. Probably worse here, but in an average day, your hands will come into indirect contact with 15 penises. Uh, that doesn't make sense. Touching door handles, etc. In an average mm. day, your hands. I'm itching all over. In an, average, in an average day, your hands will have come into indirect contact. With 15 penises. I want a private bathroom here. That would be a total of 45 penises. It's a 15, 30, 45, 50, 65 penises in a five-day work week. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. I do the math right on there. Is it 75? 75 penises. And one of them belongs to Tim McWilliams. Ah! <laughs> And, uh, oh, you've heard this one before. Several well-documented instances have been reported of extremely obese people flushing aircraft toilets while sitting on them. Mm -hmm. The vacuum action of these toilets... Sucking action, their insides out. Sucked, sucked their, their rectums out. Mm. Uh, okay, that's, well, that's, that's, that's it for now. I got more later. That is uh, I You know what? I, now I'm feeling all queasy. Mm -hmm. I'll, le I'll leave you with that. And it's time for uh, the trip to Los Angeles. Ah. Let's see, we got uh I love, I love LA. Da, 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 da. Trip to LA. Trip to LA 
way to go to a Star Center D Hollywood party. Highlands Nightclub on August 23. This is from E! Entertainment Television. Look at their all-new summer lineup, including Nearly Famous 2 and Celebrities Uncensored. Two great new shows from E! Exclamation all summer long. It's over. You love it. Yeah, sorry. Now. Can you play it again? <laughs> no. no. Come on. I'm trying to do a... There we go. I know you're doing a contest, but I'm over here I'm just show. effing around, and I'm and sorry. Also, I no, no. Also, to an extent... <laughs> This is like the total L.A. out of town thing. Yeah, I know the tourists. Yeah. As somebody who lived there, right? Girl, this is like such bull ass. When you would see people driving around playing this song on their radios, Ventura Boulevard. We love it. All right, let's give away the uh, the trip now. We got a shot for one person. I want to go see Lino. One person. Then we got to get the buzz. Let's go to. Uh, this is a national contest, right? Anybody from any city? Uh, is that it? Well, we'll find out. Hello, Donna Mike. Hey, shut the radio down. Sorry, this disqualified. Huh. Today, unbelievable. Hello, yeah. Don and Mike, hello. How you doing? Who, who's this? This is Mike from the Legacy. From the Legacy Philly, okay. Have you been listening to the whole show today? Y yes, I have. Very simple question. I covered this ad nauseum in the first break of the show. I received a troubling card from my adopted uh, mother. M yes. Mother. 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 What was on the front of the card? It would be a bluebird. Whoa! Yeah. yeah. All right. Good job. Oh, now cue the music. Yeah, good good good. Good. There you go. All right. What, what, what's your name, my friend? I'm Mike. All right, Mike. Enjoy your two-night, three-day trip to Los Angeles. You're going on August 23rd to a star-studded E! Exclamation point Hollywood party at the Highlands Nightclub. And watch Nearly Famous 2 and Celebrities on E! Exclamation point. Play that sounds great, guys. Thank you. You guys rock. And these guys that call in that don't know what you're about, Talking about, you know, what happens to you every day, that's what makes real radio, because that's real life, guys. You know what it's right all about. On. Thank yeah. you, Philadelphia. Yeah. Somebody yeah. great one. Thank you. Have a, have a great time out there, my friend. Thank you. I appreciate it, guys. I'll give you Leah Remini's address. <laughs> Ooh, that'd be nice. Hey. Go by and see how she's doing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Hold on uh, just a second. And now, look at that. Pulled it in, in time for news. Next week we got so much we got to get to. Christ. Christ. Who was that? What? I thought you were looking at a hottie that just walked no. by. I was. Okay. Was it a non-hottie? No, it was Michelle. The hottie you're telling me it was a hottie. Michelle. Okay. Let's go to bus. In a world where owning a radio was strictly forbidden, God. one man found a way to bring good news to his people. Okay. It's me. He made it up. Now you said her name, Mike. Yeah. Buzz? Yes. So we all think about sex with Michelle. And shaking her hand. What is... <laughs> oh, and God, with her. Double that penis count. What is, what is your lead story on the news and comments today, Buzz? Today, Rosie O'Donnell finds a new way to communicate. Oh, God. Now, there's a woman whose hand would be penis-free. <laughs> I guarantee that. Uh, stay, tuned stay tuned for news and comments, news and comments coming, up coming up on the Don and Mike Show. Don and Mike Show. That was very professional. Now, this is the Don and Mike Show. What's the word from Planet Crackpot? The Don and Mike Show. La 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 la, little Debbie, the Don and Mike Show. Yeah, yeah. Here's uh, Buzzy and the News Show. Buzz brought to you by Paramax Sexual Pleasure and Performance Enhancer. Oh, someone called for a doctor. It's doctor developed with clinically tested Paramax works. Get it at Rite Aid, GNC, and other select retailers today. Paramax, one triple eight. Try V Max. And now here's Buzz. Hi, Buzz. Hi, Donna Mike. We haven't heard much from Rosie O'Donnell lately. Good. Oh, no. Yes, we have. 
There she is. Hi, baby. These days, she's letting her artwork do the talking. Oh, so. Some art right there. See? <laughs> An art gallery in Provincetown, Massachusetts, says it'll have a viewing of Rosie's work on June 27th. Shocker that it's in P-Town. Word is she started painting the day after 9-11. See? Uh, many of her two dozen abstract pieces are collages on wood or canvas with little or no actual subject. Here's one that she calls All About Rosie. Okay. <laughs> the colors run together. <laughs> Here's one that she calls a study in brown and red. Huh. Rosie? Oh, we're look we'll wait for the videotape to oh, Rosie to queue up. Rough. Hmm. Oh, you know. <laughs> oh, it's to Christ. <laughs> I know. It's not, you know. No big deal, really. Goddamn machine. Jeez, you know, you wait for a nice little tooth effect. Mm -hmm. yeah. Art effect, Mike. Yeah. There it is. There it is. Yeah, I've lost my zeal for it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then. Um, the gallery. Not really, Buzz. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There she dropped. She dropped the can. She dropped a bottle of watercolor, and she dropped the bottle right. that all of the brushes were in. And looked like Pollock. She's made a discovery. Oh, it works. <laughs> I always thought that movie was Pollock. <laughs> the one with that Harris, right? No, that'd be one L, Don. Oh. There's no L's in Ed. <laughs> Keep making art, Rosie. I like to know how they did that. I'd like to. I'd like to see the show, the making of that CD. You ever play that uh, that, that game on the boardwalk? That spin art game? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. exactly that's what hers look exactly like. Exactly what it's mm, like. Tastes like chicken. That's kind of what it's like. Yeah, that's interesting. Oh, there it is. Whoa. The gallery says Rosie shows real talent, even if she has not revealed the deeper meaning behind her work, assuming there is one. Uh, quoting a gallery spokeswoman, she doesn't want to talk about them. She's tired of talking. She's using her paintings instead of talking. Uh, I think she does want to talk. Rosie? With her painting. Is. is there anything else you'd like to say, Rosie? Yo. Hey, wow. what's up, baby? Yeah. There she is, Rosie O'Donnell. Sort of talking. Uh. Yeah. Right. It's not as good. <laughs> That's not as good as the ones we have live, the real ones. I know. <laughs> Christian Ex Here are the real ones, Mike, from our staff. <laughs> That's one. Mm -hmm. Okay, that one wasn't really great. <laughs> That's another one. That's pretty good. These are real ones, mm -hmm. not from our sound effects library. Mm -hmm. I think that, that might have been Broyhill. Right. That's Charlie Broyhill. This is All right. you. All right, next. This one's me. Okay. <laughs> Good one. The next one is Mike. The next one is Buzz. It was very hard to get Buzz to burp. Didn't catch me at the right time, I guess. The next one is Rob A. Spiewak. Wow. The next one is Miss Terry. You know, with the wonderful Miss Terry. Delicate. Huh? Yeah, just a little one. The next one is <laughs> the winner. Salesman Tim McWilliams. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hard to beat. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Hard to beat. Thinking back to the session, I seem to remember the smell of Caesar salad. Ooh. We ought to do that again sometime. Anytime. We really ought to do that <laughs> again. <laughs> because our staff changes all the time. <laughs> We've got a lot of new people on this show. <laughs> Rosie's still speaking. <laughs> hey, baby. <laughs> baby, what's happening? <laughs> You're a great artist. Oh, now that. that was abstract. <laughs> Rosie, you're a fantastic artist. Uh, I know you've got, you got, got a lot mural. to say. You've got a lot to say. <laughs> oh, God. Mm, I smell... Uh, <laughs> Pizza. And now I smell female. I smell oh. female. <laughs> Have you been eating at the Y? <laughs> Rosie? Oh, much. Oh, much. Seems like she's trying to talk. That's uh, not good. You're listening to Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> <laughs> Our exclusive interview on her artwork. Yeah, her artwork. 
<laughs> Rosie, are you upset about Barry Manilow? Uh, you know, he, he broke his nose yesterday. Uh, oh. I know, Buzz had that on the news. Yeah. I know, you, uh, it smells like the Jersey Turnpike in here. You love him, right? <laughs> That's more of a hack. Very much. <laughs> Christian extremists are asking the government to lift the no-fly zone over Disney World. Attractions like Disney World have gotten extra protection ever since the government stepped up Homeland Security. But the Family Policy Network, based here in Virginia, is asking that the no-fly zone over Disney World be lifted this week during the annual Gay Days celebration. This is the 13th year for Gay Days. I hate this weekend. I really do. All the gays come into the park. We have to make special allowances for the gays. Right. Smith, why is that? <laughs> hey, Smith, what's going on? Give me an update. Man, man, oral. Right out front the teacup, right, sir. Need recommendation. Over. Get our special Mickey undercover security guards and have them escorted from the park. <laughs> if they cause any fuss, bring them out to the waste deposit area where we have the nuclear waste. It's right next to Disney's Animal Kingdom. <laughs> and if they get really, really nasty or you can placate them with some ostrich boots, go ahead. Is that all right, Smith? Mr. Eisner? Yes, Smith. They're undressing the animatronic robot of Abraham Lincoln. It's all right. They won't find the pay, the pay, the money shot. <laughs> Thank you. That was difficult for me to say. I had a brain fart. God hates fags. Smith out. Way to go, Smith. Keep up the good work. There'll be an extra penny in your envelope this week. <laughs> Disney doesn't sponsor gay days. It's just a week in which 100,000 gays and lesbians go to Disney World. It started today, this year, and runs through Sunday. The fundamentalist Christian group wants to fly over the park with banners on these days. Oh, come on. The banners say things like, Jesus Christ, hope for homosexuals.com. The group says Disney's suppressing free speech by asking the government to keep the no-fly zone in oh, place. You know, let the people have a weekend in Disney World. Amen. God. This is Disney, my. Yes, it's Disney. What? Don't fly those banners. They'll bother the people. And aren't we having Homo Joe and Cheryl the Big Dyke going down to uh, the uh, Gay Pride, Pride Parade this weekend, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, report on Monday. Yeah. Report Monday. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Crotchless Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> yo ho, yo ho, a sailor's life for me. The Hung Mansion. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Eisner. Great to be here. Oh, it's the Magic Castle. My mom's gravy. By Greg Wilson. <laughs> Who to dress up as? Ariel or Snow White? Ariel or Snow White? <gasps> I'm just going to break a tie with Pocahontas. <laughs> it is a big world after all. Yay. <laughs> Disney's Michael Eisner <laughs> says he hopes to keep distributing animated movies made by Pixar. This after a record-breaking box office over the weekend for Finding Nemo. Quoting Eisner, we have a good relationship with Pixar. Oh, no, I, you know, I, I read about this, Buzz, I'm sure you're going to get to this. The deal, mm -hmm. typical... Disney, mm -hmm. Disney gets like seventy percent of the profits. Is that is that something what it like is? that? Yes. And, and Pixar, mm -hmm. all of the computer guys that really make it happen, mm -hmm. right? And all they do is just slap the the Disney name on it. They get a, a much smaller share the of, of, of the percentage. And it's pretty labor intensive, even though it's computer generated animation, it's like right? Four years. It takes like four or five yeah. years to make one of the dumb really? movies. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Quoting Eisner, we have a good relationship with Pixar. I think a better relationship today than we had on Friday. Pixar also made Toy Story and A Bug's Life. Mm -hmm. Things are going so poorly. Hello, 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 Robbie. And Disney will continue to rape them all through the video and DVD marketing of it, and that's where they really make all their money. Wow. Another the thing I hate about Disney. Yeah. Everything. So thank many God, things. yeah, but thank God I don't have a little one anymore. Yeah. Is, is the advertising... Uh, and poor Rob with Julia now. And Mike, even your kids are they're getting on the cusp of that. Yep. Where it's, you see the ad, and it's The Jungle Book 2. But remember, it's going back in the vault mm -hmm. on June 31st. That's horrible. And yeah. won't be released for 10 more years. And all that is, is just extorting mm -hmm. money from people. It's terrible. Because really, there's just no, you know, there's no reason for it. Julia just turned two years, six months, and she's in a panic to see Finding Nemo. Mm, right. And she really, this is the first time we've seen this, and I guess I'll be living with it for, what, ten more years now? Just no. uh, The sharks are a little scary.
Okay, well, I'll close my eyes. Yeah, but it's G. <laughs> I mean, it's not even PG. It's yeah, just G. doesn't G. matter, though, when they're that little, because they, they'll, they'll just get a little freaked out, yeah. I think. Yeah. She went with How old is she now? Two and a half. She was fine with Rosemary's Baby. So, huh. the, you like, you, 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 and you have the DVD of The Omen that I gave her, right? <laughs> she loves the extras. <laughs> I think Julia is advanced beyond her years. When she was at our house last weekend, I don't know how many uh, cigarettes did she have? <laughs> Seven? Well, eight, you know, Buzz kept flying her with them. Yeah. I, tell you, I told her to slow down. <laughs> Buzz, hold on. Hold on. There, please. Right. I know you have more news. We mm -hmm. we got we have to, we have to break. And why even put this through? Fake gay guy pretending to be mad. Hello. I couldn't be. <laughs> Frank and Bean. Whenever he gets oh, caught. Same guy. Yeah. Here we right. go, Joe. Frank and Bean. We'll be right back. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. One eight six six. Singular. One. 866 singular. Here's the deal. We've been reading this commercial for about a month. Yesterday, notice I'm not going with the script. Yesterday, my wife went out with my son. My son has lost his telephone. Right. He said, that's it. You lose your phone. You got to buy another one. As it turns out, they went to singular. No lie. This would be a real endorsement. My wife and my son. And they bought one color screen Nokia 3560 phone for $29.99 and got a second one for free after the Fiddler instant rebate when they signed up for the two-year service agreement. Do you want to do this? I'm telling you, my wife did it and my son did it. You won't get an endorsement like this. That's true. You were telling, you were talking about it during the break. Call one eight six six singular. You can get that deal too. One eight six six singular. Certain restrictions apply, so you get a singular store for details. Um, yeah, there, yeah, and the phone number. Right. This is the Don and Mike Show. God damn. Uh, gosh, I hate to interrupt. It's all been so incredibly fascinating and entertaining and instructive. Really, the time has just flown by. The Don and Mike Show. Are such morons. If you like, I will repeat it. Better yet, I'll, I'll let, let you eat, eat it. it. <laughs> the Don and Mike Show. Here's the deal. Yeah. We, we got this client. Wireless phone. Great client. Love them. They spend a, a ton of money on our show. Fantastic. We've been reading their commercials for about two months. We just get told that in the commercials where we don't read their phone number... Mm -hmm. They don't pay, and that they get free commercials. Hmm. Yeah, because we haven't been giving them phone number. Nobody told us that. We've been talking about all the stuff in yeah. the commercial, and then sometimes we don't get to the uh, phone number because the phone number is at the, beginning, at the end of the, uh, the commercial. Ah. So the, the question is, to the dum-dums that, that are selling this stuff, why not you know, either put the phone number right in the very beginning okay, yeah, or, or simply just write us a note saying, guys, you must mention mm -hmm. phone number. That's simple. That's, it's, it's moronic. And no one listened to me about the traffic thing today. I know. Nobody listened at all. Shocking. They just came in and had their little BS small talk with her. How are things in the real world of radio? Oh, no. So nice to be around the real world of radio again. Please. How are you feeling? Eat me. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna. I'm doing fine. All right, good. Wait till I get in the car tonight. Yeah, I know. Oh, dear. I got her phone number. What's up, bitch? What's up, bluebird bitch? <laughs> Sorry, it's That's been weighing a, heavily on him. Apologize. Of course, do not apologize. What's Many up? times I will take your apologies. Today I will not. What's up, c-word? What's what? up, adopted bitch mother? Mm. It feels. It just feels a little better when you get that. Yeah, up. but I want to. I want her to hear it. Right. I don't. I don't want you guys to have to hear it. Okay. Anyway, and, you know, never mind. I'm going to censor myself. Never mind. Buzz, what's that? Hi, hi Don and Mike. Hi. Things are going so poorly at ABC and Disney. And I have to buy milk tonight on the way home. Oh, <laughs> who needs that? <laughs> you know, that's just, just a cherry on my day. To finish up just the... Just a cherry on my day. <laughs> It'll get better after that, I'm sure. After I buy the milk? Yeah. And finish your phone call. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, she picks up the phone. Yeah. But even if she picks up the phone and doesn't pick up the phone, it's not going to stop the fact that I, I pick gotta up buy, milk. Yeah. i got to buy milk all the way home. Right. They give you strong bones and teeth, though. Mm -hmm. I know. But, but here's the deal, Rob. Drink milk. I can't drink milk. Here's the deal. Hmm. 
I buy the milk. I don't mind buying I'm not milk. lactose intolerant. Oh, okay. I was worried. I buy the milk. Everybody drinks my milk. Well, that's not right. You want milk? Go buy your own milk. What kind of milk? Just right here to skim milk. Uh, skim milk. Skim milk. Skim milk. Oh. I bet there's somebody in our listening audience that could get you. Uh, how much do uh, you want to court? Well, no, I'm going to stop. On the, Mike thank you, I'm going to stop on the way home to do it. Well, now somebody's going to bring it by as a quart you want? A quart no, of milk? No, I need, I need like half, half a gallon. gallon. You should really buy it by the gallon. You save money. Yeah, yeah but uh, whatever. They sell gallons of it? Of course. Yeah, yeah. 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 Two sixty nine. I thought that was like a half that. gallon. For no, a gallon. half gallon is smaller. No, you buy it. That's a clue. Make it half and half. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry, I'm falling apart. It's okay, no, you're doing show. fine. No, you're, you're not fine. No, yeah. Go ahead, Buzz. Just, I will. Go ahead. This is a time for you to be assertive. I understand. Go. Things, I, to finish up the Disney news, things are going so poorly at ABC and Disney. Disney's now looking to sell its retail stores. Theme park business is down, as well as the ratings at Disney-owned ABC TV. And the Disney stores you see in malls are not all that profitable. <laughs> Hundreds of them have closed in the past few years, and because of that, there will likely be more closings. Wham. Disney wants to sell the chain to a retail specialist who would manage the stores and give Disney a cut. Oh, God. You see, the thing is, I'm on this thing. I, I take my vitamins... Mm -hmm. I work out every day. I get help. I, I've been seven months now. I've lost 60 pounds. Mm, great. Look at me. I lost 60 friggin' pounds. Right. All I have three times a day are protein shakes. You've lost 60 pounds? Total? 60. Yeah, total of 60 now. Man, that's 49 pounds more than I've lost. <laughs> wow. Congratulations. I'm sorry. I'm happy about that. Congratulations on 11. That's pretty yeah. substantial. Way to go. 283. Hey. From 294. Good work. Very good. Yeah, I uh, uh, today I got on the scale today and was very pleased with yeah. that. Outstanding. Yeah, I'm, I'm psyched about that. Mark, I don't remember the 294. I remember 291. 294. 294. Wow, even better. 294 might have really been one I I was just too embarrassed to even say, but that was the real number, which was the pinnacle, mm -hmm. and you know, and I only have 70 more pounds to go. You're, yeah. you're on a roll. You know, it's, been, it's, it's been seven months for me just to get the 60 pounds. Just let me say, the dead doctor that fell down and hit his head, mm -hmm. I'd like to say thank you. Atkins? Because it's working for me. You did good work. Man. Well, more power to you. I, I wish you nothing but success, and I mean that. But all I have are three shakes a day and then like a piece of chicken. So everybody in my house, stop drinking the milk. Yeah, he needs his milk. Just drink water. <laughs> you guys don't need milk. Really, you don't need it. I, I need the milk. Yeah. And stop eating the bananas. You make your shake with milk? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With skim milk? Yeah. Two mm -hmm. ounces of skim milk. Perfect. And you need it. Three times a day. Mm -hmm. I need it. I got to have it. Oh, I got to call this bitch. <laughs> In sports, x ray I've been me crazy. I'm sorry. X -ray I'm show all that, over the place. x ray show that none of Sammy Sosa's five bats in the Baseball Hall of Fame and none of the 76 in his locker contain cork. We're still waiting to hear what punishment Major League hey, Baseball know, will dole out for what Sosa says was the accidental use of a corked bat in a game earlier this you know, week. Then, then that speaks to it. And you yeah. know what? He's probably telling the truth. I think so. And finally, Rob, I believe him. Rob shakes his head. Have a, have a little Rob. trio of stories to finish up with. Finally, the weather warms up. People have trouble staying dressed. In Aberdeen, Washington Monday, railroad workers spotted a topless woman hanging upside down from a ladder at the end of a train. She threw some rocks at the cops who tried to arrest her, quoting them, she appeared to be intoxicated. <laughs> Lisa, you are on the air. In Easton, Pennsylvania, Richard James Clater, who's accused of pleasuring himself in traffic and honking his horn so people would look, is going to prison. <laughs> he says he did it because he felt neglected by his wife and mother. Oh, dear. And oh what a great guy he is. In New Philadelphia, PA, a 70-year-old man and a 60-year-old woman have been convicted on public indecency charges for sexual acts performed in a booth at a fast food restaurant. <laughs> this is saying, huh? I'm Buzz Burbank on the Don yeah. and Mike Show. Thank you, Buzz. Now, no, that's how you do it, folks. No, that's how you finish strong. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go uh, 
Uh, listen, uh, tomorrow uh, to win another Hooters trip mm -hmm. to Myrtle Beach. Cool. We won't be here tomorrow because of my kid's uh, graduation. And uh, may I say to your son, I have said it privately to him, I will say, congratulations, Bart. Way to go. The, the light is at the end of the tunnel. Good work, Bart. He does. Thank you. And we all do. So we'll be back Monday with a new episode, including, uh, well, I'll... The recap of the Bluebird Lady. There you go. And uh, let me see. We got the the graduation, and we got the, the gay wife, pride, the wife's birthday. Yes, right. and the gay pride mm -hmm. thing. And, right. And Bob Hope. Yeah. And, and Joe and and Regis getting his ass looked at. Oh Look man, that. that's gross. So we got much. so much good stuff to, uh, to get to. Uh, so have a, uh, a safe weekend, everybody. Love you, Frida. Love you, Bart. Good day to you, sir. 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 <laughs> I'm sorry. That's all right. Sorry to be such a mess today. Well, you're, you're entitled. Rusty. I haven't noticed. <laughs> PM. Peter Fram. So we meet again. This is Sammy Davis Jr. saying, uh, be kind, be nice. And I hope the next performer has the pleasure of having as nice an audience as you've been tonight. And let me leave you swinging.